Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's another Sea of Spears Sunday. Uh, another Westerosi weekend. Another Nine Marian Nun Day. Uh, whatever. We're back. Uh, we are <laughs> four Nine Marians. Uh, you know, you're fairly nun-ish. Uh, I guess. Uh, whatever. So, no nonsense, Nymerian Nun Day. Yeah. Nun Day. No nonsense means zero shenanigans. You know, I've heard Rusty kind of cram a lot of alliterations into the game. This uh, was the worst one. I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of alliteration. I blame it on reading comic books when I was a kid. I'm like, what? my initials aren't even the same letter five times in a row. What the, kind of, <laughs> the shit kind of name is this? Parents. Um, but yeah, I'm a sucker for alliteration. I apologize for nothing, just like always when I'm running stuff. Speaking of not apologizing for anything, no matter what happens during a session, we're going to All a right. wedding at the Twins. Well, I thought you were going to introduce oh me. Gosh. No. <laughs> I'm just, just reminding everybody uh, what's in store today. Uh, the, the hospitality of one of the wealthiest houses in the Riverlands. Uh, as you are going to a, a wedding. It's going to be great. So um, we spent uh, much of last episode traveling, going north and then going northwest uh, and then going west, kind of off the King's Road to end up here. Um, we had some pretty uh, symbolically important role play with some dragon dreams of of old Valyrian lore, um, and the, uh, the the crossing of the Ruby Ford uh, was kind of a uh, a powerful moment for our uh, our young heroes. Um, it's a big damn deal. So, let's pick up with you guys getting kind of uh, within sight of the twins. Uh, the last bit of road. You are just riding alongside the mighty green ford of the Trident River, um, which comes from the north and on down. And the wealth of House Frey uh, is because they're the only place to cross the, the green ford for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. Um, and it's, it's nice. You know, the Riverlands are very different than what you lot grew up with. Everything is startlingly green and damp. Uh, you're just like, there's rivers and creeks everywhere. The place clearly gets a ton of rain compared to home. Um, it's, it probably feels kind of muggy to you guys, uh, but it is cooler. Um, so it may balance out to being comfortable, or it may balance out to being the worst of uncomfortable. You could be wet and cold. Uh, by by what your standards are. Um, Alisane Mormont uh, seems just fine. Uh, Robert Frey is trying to, like, eagerly point out things as you're getting closer. <laughs> and, like, the well, last I'm... few days, it was, me and Lady Alisane stopped at that inn on our way south. I only been there the one time, though. Right, like I could still only had this one trip. Very a kid on a road trip who recognizes stuff. Yeah, I, w I want to say right now, no matter what he says, Adam is going to be listening with rapt attention. Because Fascinating. I yeah. Um, um, we're, getting, we're, up. we're killing every fray, but but little Robert, or he out of here, right? <laughs> right, right. Sure. That's the plan. Yeah. Little well, Robert gets to live. Backing up for a moment, you you mentioned that the phrase make their money because they're the only place to cross. And I can't help imagine, like that, uh, the phrase are like uh, bridge trolls, uh, extorting people <laughs> who cross. Like, to, to oh use yeah. Them. Yeah, you know, I mean, like like those <laughs> terrible wyverns down in the Red Mountains that charge people to go through the only mountain pass. Uh, I'm unfamiliar with that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I haven't heard of them. That yeah. sounds much more familiar. <laughs> <Yeah. at all. laughs> yeah. So, to be honest. So yeah, uh, you know, like a great many of the houses, their seat is where it is for a reason, right? Um, you know, it's not like it's a coincidence. Um, it's a good spot to to wield power. It's an important place to to hold, you know, for a king or a lord. 
So, uh, so yeah, like that's kind of their shtick. Uh, as you get to within, uh, you know, like that last kind of day and a half or so, Robert is able to point out more places uh, because that's not like an unusual thing. Uh, you know, distance to travel with fairly, you know, fair regularity, uh, you know, traveling with, uh, and, and he's, you swear there's like a six different Walders. You know he never means Lord Walder, because that always comes out Lord Walder. Uh, but like, you hear a red Walder, you know a black Walder, there's a big uh, and a little Walder, you guys don't one. like them. Uh, but like he, you know, hurriedly when he's telling his little stories sometimes it's just walder and you're left until later in the story to realize if he means like the 70 year old man or the 12 year old bully <laughs> because they're also often acting the same right like, you can totally yeah. see lord walder giggled because he saw a titty like like that's you know it's and on top of how many walders there are there's a bunch of wall does like, yeah. as well. So, There's yeah. Yeah. Of, like, loads of them. Yeah. With all the Walders, this is the nightmare of every genealogist, like, researching the 1800s in America. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, all right, but, but which of the Williams? You don't, yeah. you don't say record. It's like the, uh, the 100 Years of Solitude by Marquez has got the same, where there's a whole family tree with loads of people who've all got the same names. And the fact that the novel needs to point out in a, in a family tree who's who before you start is not a good sign right <laughs> so uh so yeah you can't you know, start to get stories and 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 uh not all the stories are pleasant uh and a few of them you know it's it's just kids doing kid stuff but it's like this is where we where uh me and and big water and little walder chased the miller's son with sticks uh, turn out i found later he was scared to hit back so it wasn't, wasn't fair of us i tried to change sides but Right, like a lot of the stories kind of end that way, where it's like he's trying to be a kid, and they're all being highborn kids, and you know, but not all of them are bad. Uh, you know, with a few of them, it's you know that inn has you know really good sweet rolls, and uh, you know this inn uh, had, had uh, the best raspberry jam I ever had, and you know, <laughs> and here uh, this is the star where if you turn left. Um, well, I mean, if you turn left going this way, uh, it'll take you off down this, you know, and, uh, so he's, he's clearly got mixed feelings about returning home, but you can see that he's kind of trying to focus on being, like, excited about it, right? right? He's trying to focus on, on being positive, but you definitely get the feeling that, like, as he shares a few of the stories, like, he's aware that it's been kind of shitty. Like, he's like, I don't think that, you know, Adam's leg is bad because Luke pushed him down some stairs, right? Like, I'm pretty sure. I don't I think they would have mentioned that. And I think that was just an accident, right? So, like, I don't think that these guys play Ironborn and Phrase, which means that you know, the sisters get, you know, practice swords and we don't, right? Like, <laughs> so he's just like, you know, you can tell that he's, uh, occasionally he sounds a little wistful, he's right? He's realizing uh, he grew up shitty. Yeah, so, but he's definitely trying to, like, stay upbeat. Um, Alisane is, uh, you know, she's, like, seldom in a bad mood. Right, but her mood's been pretty good as you guys have gotten farther and farther north, and it's gotten cooler and cooler. Uh, she's clearly getting physically more comfortable. Um, she does express, as you guys kind of round the last corner in the road, and there you see the twins. Uh, she lets out a sigh, and she's like, "Well, Kidder's hoping they'll let me take the boy with me again when we leave." Uh, and it's kind of a fear that she hasn't given a voice to yet. Uh, and remember that Lord Walt was kind of joking when he gave her Robert as a squire. Uh, and it's, you know, it's been over a year. Like, he could ask for him back. He probably yeah. won't. 
because he gave away a grandchild as a joke, like you're probably not going to want him back. But it's, you know, legally, he could certainly say, oh, yeah, his squireship is over. He's, you know, so you can tell, you know, for the first time here, when it's clearly too late to do anything about it, she kind of lets out this, you know, sigh and gives voice uh, to this concern for the first time. Um, My lady, Allison, you have been a unexpectedly excellent influence of the boy. I, too, uh, pray to the seven, they'll let you take him again. <laughs> unexpectedly, he says. <laughs> I know that fancy southern word. Ah, oh, well. And she's still, like, blushing a little bit. <laughs> but she, she looks, she tries to look surly and bearish uh, at the, the unexpected part. But, uh-oh, we have lost an ash. Uh, but yes, you do, in fact, then see the twins, uh, which are two identical large stone castles on either side of the trident. Um, they're both very defended. Uh, as you're getting close, there's high, high curtain walls. They've got deep moats. Um, you know, they are full-on castles that are just kind of joined by this umbilical bridge uh, that's the actual crossing. It's kind of like a supplementary courtyard to each castle is this big, wide bridge that goes between them. Um, um, Bela, suppose in a hypothetical you to take this castle. How would you approach it? Uh... Um... <laughs> Maybe we can uh, talk about that some other time. <laughs> uh, there is also a tower in the middle of the bridge um, that, again, it gives it this castle instead of bridge vibe, right? Uh, but yeah, it's it's additional security right there in the middle because, uh, again, you know, ironborn raiders are a thing and other people attacking by, you know, shallow, is it shallow draft? Is the, is the or the keel, which one's the the depth of the boat? Anyways, uh, you know, they're really the same thing, they, right? I think so. But the draft uh, so, is the measurement, but the keel is what defines yeah. that. I think. So the the you know, uh, any sure, ironboard, feel free to comment. River, yeah, river boats, <laughs> they they can't read. Uh, um, but yeah, so you know, river boat attacks are a thing, and so it's it's a it's a heckin' secure uh, looking place. Um, and as the, the final stretch uh, is actually through uh, apple orchards and uh, a cornfield, uh, because they are also, you know, uh, a seat of people, uh, and, you know, they need food. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, corn is not distinctly American in George R. R. Martin's work. Uh, it's one of the few... Uh, vegetable swaps he made uh, was adding, you know, corn to this otherwise European diet. So it's uh, it doesn't look haunted. Uh, it's not spoopy like Heron Hall. Uh, it looks like a pretty good castle. Uh, you know, it's it's a, or, or rather pair of castles or almost trio of castles. Um, and, you know, the ride through this last bit is is pretty you know it's it's apple orchards and, and cornfields and um it's a pretty nice day it's half overcast let's say you know kind of half cloudy half blue skies but uh you know the last day or so of travel hasn't had any rain uh and yeah just that's the twins uh no no real horror stories um and and little robert starts it with uh that's the twins uh this one's the east uh, this this was the east tower and now it's the west tower but you lot would have figured it out I'm sure but anyways uh, here we is uh, and then he kind of strikes a pose for a moment and then kind of gets back in line as you're writing thank you Robert mm -hmm. he's so sweet <laughs> uh, well, we'll and you on in Yep. Uh, the uh, some of the fields nearby uh, have clearly been like 
picked bear. Um, and then you're like, oh, he's about to host a wedding feast. So, yeah. Um, and then as you are right outside the twins, kind of just outside the moats, uh, there are a handful of pavi uh, pavilion tents. Um, but they are clearly like third sons. Uh, right? Like, it, it looks like they're making room for the lords inside. Um, but uh, some of the retinues, right? Like all the soldiers and the retinues are staying out here uh, and they're still kind of huddled around a pavilion tent. The pavilion tent might not even have anybody in it. It's just that like the men at arms are sitting near there, you know, camping out near there to still kind of mark mark territory. Um, and uh, yeah, you see a decent number of folk. Uh, you uh, recognize uh, the seals of House Charlton and Viperin. Uh, House Hay, you guys recently hung out with Sir Donald Hay. He was one of the, uh, the one of your champions. Yep. Um, and uh, you see again House Derry. Uh, Lord Raymond was not at Derry Lands to host you because he had left early. Um, so he's here. Uh, House Woad uh, with their little white hedgehogs on a yellow field. Uh, and then on opposite ends of of the, the kind of open campground area uh you see the banner of house blackwood of raven tree hall and then on the other end uh house bracken of stonehenge uh and those two of course are our dire enemies traditionally speaking but uh it is the <sighs> bastard son of lord titus blackwood uh, that is being wed um, and it has clearly spread throughout the Riverlands uh, that that natural born son's mother uh, is Maris Bracken now Kettle Black uh, the Kettle Blacks are nowhere to be seen um, oh, no. apparently they're just not uh, interested in honoring uh, their mother's blood relations uh, by visiting the Riverlands uh, is the very disappointed uh, excuse you cook up for them. Like, oh, no. No cattle blacks are here. That's awful. Oh, um, so bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, How will we ever get by without them? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it does look like it's, it's Riverlanders <clears throat> only that you kind of see tents set up for. And it makes sense. You know, they'd be the ones that uh, arrived here the earliest uh, and with the distance they're traveling uh, you know for instance Lord Tidos would be expected to bring more men uh, to kind of be an, an honor guard type of thing because it's his son getting wed uh, and then probably knowing that the Brackens brought extra men uh, just to, to keep a balance and not be one-upped uh, by the, the bastards uh, from Raven Tree. Uh, and all that, so it's, yeah. Uh, you know that it's not going to be only Riverlanders within, but uh, they're the ones that, the, the colorful pennants and tents you see out front. Hey, hey Russ, I have, a, I have a question that I Egypt. would probably know in character. Um, this house, Derry, uh, what is the relation to Sir William Derry that we yeah, may or may not be familiar with? That's him, so, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, that, oh, that, I yeah. mean, like, I'm obviously... Sure. He's not there, uh, but like, is that? I think his brother is the Lord of House Derry. Okay, um, that's what I was asking. The, yeah, the the Lord of of House Derry now uh, is Raymond, uh, which is just R A Y M U N. Like it's it's just everyone a loves phonetic yeah. spelling of Raymond. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, and he is uh, brother to Sir Willem Derry, a.k.a. Woolly Will of the Bells, uh, and also the late Sir Jonathor Derry of the Kingsguard. Um, those three were, or those two were his his younger brothers, um, is what okay. we are going with. Yeah, they're, they're, like, I think they're directly uh, related to the phrase by marriage somewhere. Yeah. Uh, they are, yes. Um, their sister, yeah. Maria, which is M-A-R-I-Y-A, 
just toss an extra Y in there, uh, is married to a fray, uh, Merit. And they have spat out several frays of their own. Uh, as as frays are wont to <laughs> do, do. Uh, there are a lot of them, including little Walter Frey uh, that you guys met. Uh, he's one of, he is half dairy by blood. It's, oh, yeah, no. Uh, the Riverlands. He's such a little shit. Yeah, the Riverlands are like this. Uh, they are just, they are frays everywhere. Do we need banjo music um, to accompany us? Just about. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, it's, it's a lot. The, uh... Um, I'm gonna check something real quick, because I think okay. there's stores in my rooms. I thought it was just, like, a fire truck or something outside, like normal? No, those are storm sirens. Are they? Yes. Poop. All right, can you pull up weather.com real quick, and just yep, check yep, up yep, there? Yep, 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 yep. See what we're supposed sirens. to be doing. Um... So yeah, we might need to. Uh, Do you not have storm sirens in California? Bit. We don't have storms barely. Yeah, they just have earthquakes. It's different. And it's wild, like... and wildfires, tornado. Warning. Yeah, we don't have a siren for those. Hold on, tornado watch or warning? Warning. Okay. Okay. Uh, we need to go. Just Unfortunately. for. Uh, we'll see. I mean, is it for us? It's for us. Okay. Get somewhere safe. Because, <laughs> yeah, warnings are the ones that there is a tornado somewhere within danger. Mm -hmm. Get uh, somewhere safe. I'll stay so, online. We'll just talk so to what you do. Yeah, so you guys hang out. Uh, we're going to take off for a little bit, and we'll keep an eye on this. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Bodhi was right to be upset. Uh, so, uh, I know, always know in Russia. Felicia, yeah. <laughs> I'm going. Yeah. So hopefully, uh, Felicia and I will be back, uh, shortly. Uh, if not, you guys just hang out for a bit. Uh, yep, we'll, we'll see, see you all soon. Yep. All right, everyone. Give me a, a moment. I'll rearrange the cameras a little bit so that, uh, it's not oh. as awkward for us. So give me, give me just a moment. I, mean, I, was, I was expecting excitement, but not quite this much. <laughs> yeah. Well, you okay. shouldn't have caused a tornado. What? I, I'm no chaos here. You probably like I don't know, bumped the butterfly and caused it. Like this is like the cyberpunk game all over again. Like me getting blamed for stuff that yeah, I didn't. I, I know. I couldn't possibly have ever done. Which, by the way, I, I plan to blame you all and bitch the entire time until I get a new clone leg. I need a new clone leg. Give me a new clone leg. I mean, that's also not my fault. But, I mean, they're not expensive, so... Yeah, but I've had this one my whole life. So well, you're about to have another one. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> put, I mean, you can always just, like, put loads of stickers on it or, or whatever. Put loads of stickers on it. But, you know, make it look cool. <laughs> I mean... Bug, like, bug... Fuck Irish. He's got more money than I have. Uh, we should talk about uh, Game of Thrones maybe a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was a... <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a side on another cyberpunk game that the three of us are in. Uh, so, how nervous are we about oh, being like, here at the, at, at the Twins? If a kid is like, I'm going to stab someone right now, and a zero is like... Pass the fucking blunt, a one. I mean, in character or out of character, because those are stuff. right. I would say like out of character, probably. Let's talk sure, about out I, of character I, stuff. Out of character, I'm maybe like a five worried. I feel like some something's gonna happen, but I I don't I, know what it is yet. So I, I feel I the same it. way. Like for reference, Bela's wedding took all of like. 15 minutes in It is hard not to guess right? from like a meditative, meta narrative. Like, there's a reason we're, we're here, the camera's on it. Yes. Yeah. But like, I, t I totally get, like, yeah, look, there's. I can understand the. But I also think Rusty's too clever to, like, have us come to the twins so and then have I think, a parade kill us for no reason. Right. I, I think the interesting question then is does the interesting thing that's going to happen 
revolve around one of the phrase, or is it about the, some of the people um, being married? I have, I, I have a theory. Um, my theory is that hostilities are probably going to break out again between Blackwood and Bracken. That's what I think. I think we're going to be caught in the middle of, like, probably trying to mitigate that. Well, well do we even have a side in that conflict? Um, I mean, it depends on how close you consider, like, Vannon now that he's not a PC. But, but Vannon didn't even like his family. Because his, because his right. dad was a Blackwood, but his mother used to be a Bracken. Well, yeah, but he, Vannon didn't even know, though, until, like, we went up to King's Landing, right? So, like, he, he yeah, really knew nothing. I, yeah, like, I don't think either, I don't think House Nymerian has a strong I, stake in either of them. Really. I would say if we have to choose a side, and Vannon takes a side, then, then since he's practically a brother, we have to take his side. I would say, I might even say, like, unless he asks us, to do something, I don't know that I would want to do something like. Yeah, just like just if one of his cousins wants to duel one of his other cousins or whatever. I mean, it's it, it's probably more than a, a with Bracken and Blackwood. It's not duels like they've literally gone to war multiple times with each other, um, so like they never stay at peace for very long. My, my thought, though, is, like, it might not be up to us whether we get involved or not. We may be asked to get involved um, mm. for some reason. The same way that when we were in King's Landing, we got put on, like, detective duty, essentially, when, like, there are probably other people that the king would trust more, but we got, like, we have the PC, so we got uh, asked yeah. to... Uh, right. PC my treatment. guess is there will probably be some drama... But what's actually the main plot point while we're focused it is probably be unrelated to the wedding. Maybe something yeah. like Robert dying or something mm -hmm. else big. And we're just going to be here when we get the news. Yeah, I think there's going to be a big dun 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 kind of, oh my god, cliffhanger moment. I think the fact that we're having the wedding at Toys is a red herring. I, I, right, like, I. <laughs> We're not going to get like a red wedding type thing, most likely. That just seems no, too. We barely know these guys. On the nose, right? Like, it it's definitely make sense. not. Definitely not for us because we've not done anything to piss off the phrase. And there, and Walder's like he's a dick, but he's he won't just attack people for no reason. Right. Uh, yes. And as far well, as I mean, one of the ways he has stayed in power is you know, he's, a, he's a decently defensible castle, but it's by not making random enemies. Yeah, well, the, the whole thing about him being called the late Walder phrase because he didn't get involved in the last... Thing. Yeah, he just wants to... Well, he was just a little late as all. Once. He around, yeah, he hung back and didn't do anything until, like, the literal last minute and then sent, like, sent his guys in when it, they weren't really needed anymore. So he's not a guy who, like, is proactive about, like, attacking or anything. He's, like, he will sit back and see how things go, basically. He's an Aaron Burr. <laughs> it pays to be on the winning side. <laughs> yeah. And if you well, wait I mean, long like, enough, you can determine who's going to win. <laughs> totally. Because you, you see, like, there's multiple houses that um, that got involved straight away when uh, the rebellion started, who then changed sides when they saw that they were on the losing one. And for... Most of them that actually went quite well because then they were on the winning side and they got part like got pardoned and stuff. So, like, I can totally see like Walder not and and anyone to be honest not wanting to have to make that choice until you know it. No, like nobody likes being on the losing side, so you kind of want to hang back and see what happens. Yeah, Unless especially when you have a lot you can lose by being on the wrong side. Well, I mean, yes. I mean, I agree, but also, like... No, that, there's, there's another thing, like, that, unless you're, like, a true believer and, like, you're, like, fiercely loyal, which a lot of people are in well, I, I think it's clear, while the phrase, not fiercely loyal or true believer oh, or no. anything. I think the only thing he's really loyal to is himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think we're probably right on the consensus that Lord Frey is not going to do something wild here no definitely not he's like definitely 
Yeah, I, I don't think it, unless it, someone. It's more like just like uh, no, like no, on the nose for like fans, player. right? Like fans know something that's probably going to happen in the future. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, there'll probably be things but, that yeah. happen. Like if he I slaps will. Bela's ass or something. Oh. He'll lose his. That's going to be a scene. <laughs> Probably yeah. not a great one. I, I don't even <laughs> want to think about that. I don't... Yeah, let, let's not think about what might happen. Uh, so well, more... Uh, we, we might be thrust in some scenarios, but I think the big... Again, I feel like a big plot point is coming up. I feel like the plot point is going to be something Definitely. unrelated directly to us. And probably not even related to the wedding here. Yeah, I mean... Uh... We have done no nothing wrong ever in our lives, so it's definitely no anything to do with us. <laughs> I'm joking. For, for one, like, I don't see, because our timeline being different, I it just just naturally, I don't see Cersei not half murdering Robert. It, yeah. The timeline's different, but it's not that different, right? Like, it, Yeah, like, stuff involving us would be different, but, like, she still hates Robert, and he still gets drunk all the time and goes hunting. Mm. I don't see Robert living very long. Whether that's yeah, he, the inciting I, incident of our I, version of the War of Five Kings or not, yeah, yeah, sorry, e but even like even aside from the stuff we know about, like the canon plot, he had hunting accident written all over him from like birth, basically. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, I mean, I, and, I, and that may not even be the inciting incident. It's just the obvious one. Yeah, no, like. He, it's possible, yeah. yeah. I, I, def I definitely don't see him living to a ripe old age or anything like that. Um, but, I, but I think when he does go, it might not be the big grand conspiracy thing. It, I mean, it might still be he was half murdered, but it might not be like as but, integral to our but, plot. But Robert being murdered isn't what's at the War of Five Kings. It was the fact that multiple people knew his heir were not his heirs. Yeah. And no, nothing in our plot changes that. Right, exactly. Yeah. And and we don't even know that, though. So, like, in, in our minds, no, Joffrey right. is no, if, yeah. the rightful yeah. heir. If so, anything, we've seen evidence that those people okay. are still suspicious. Um, we have. And, and, of course, and, of course, any one of those people who knows could come to us and go, Jesus, back, don't, don't give away anything. And then we have to decide, like, whether we believe them or not, basically. Uh, so, uh, yes. Are we okay over there? Yes, uh, we were under a uh, tornado warning for what was supposed to be another 22 minutes. Uh, and then about a minute ago, we were just, you know, watching live on our phones and they're like, and, and it's off. Uh, so it so like, this okay. is the game a tornado cannot stop. <laughs> yes. Not, let's maybe not challenge God. I will like, challenge God on your a new tornado for all people's behalf. Yeah. Do you want I'm, to go have the words? I can have words. A, a like, single <laughs> tornado touched down here in the last 30 years. Well, about two hours a year, but around here. So I know what I'm talking about. Well, I, I am equally certain that there is nothing that that bitch ass, punk ass, weak ass San Andreas fault can do. To hey, stop, hey, 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 to hey, this is funny, man. How dare you turn these tables on me? Um, yeah. yeah, let's not tempt down like environmental disasters. <laughs> I have one story, though. I'm fine. And there's no chance of the English invading uh, and cutting out Ash's internet or whatever other natural hazards Scotland has. They wouldn't, they wouldn't I don't know. <laughs> is the Loch Ness monster maybe a thing they have? I don't know. There would be a march on the border immediately by a bunch of angry Scottish people. <laughs> and they'd be naked. Naked and holding great swords, I assume. How, oh, how okay. often am I? <laughs> uh, Felicia, should be back shortly. I don't know what's taking The tornado us. got her. <gasps> get, 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 get. <laughs> from, from the hallway to the... To <laughs> got the her. That's how <laughs> they do it. Uh-oh, Ash is getting something. Did Ash forget? He's going to go fight the English. You brought us. He, he, he has the, the if you sword, right? My stereotype. Maybe not yep. do it while holding a great sword. We mentioned them. I, I thought maybe he was going to go get a sword, but he might have forgotten it's right there. Sorry. He's like, you know what? You're right. The last fucking straw of the English. 
everyone else and like all of Scotland replies. <laughs> oh, a wild Felicia is appearing. We'll see about that. Oh, oh it yeah. is. Throw a Pokeball. Uh, uh, but yeah, then we lost Ash, and I'm not yeah. sure why. I got Tornado legitimately got him too. what Ash said before he took off. Uh, so, um, we'll just okay. just wait. And I'm going to go try and look at Twitch and see if I can make out what was going on in chat before then. So, oh. uh, hey, we were posting then... images of the twins, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. It, it yeah. was a little bit of a contest like, there. It, it is a pretty cool tower, like, design or mm -hmm. idea or, you know, place for one. Um, you know, like, like it's like, yeah, yeah, that is cool. You know, have, you know, commanding a river uh, that way um, makes for a an impressive uh, looking keep, you know. All right. Ash is back. Sorry about that. No problem. <laughs> we just, we didn't know why you left. And we're like, is he going to go fetch a sword and fight the English? <laughs> 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 like, we joked about it too much. He's got to go. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's try and get back to it. Uh, waiting for you uh, at the gate of the Eastern Tower, uh, which is the main tower. It's, it's where the Lord's Hall is and stuff like that. Uh, you see a familiar figure. Uh, your childhood and early teen friend, Sir Vannon Rivers, who uh, is eagerly waiting uh, there. And, and yeah. I'm going to let my sisters approach him first since they spent more time with him. But I'm going to smile and slowly approach with my arm out to shake his. <laughs> He was like Warm. a brother with us the whole time. Because <laughs> real brothers were away forever, basically. Right? He was a brother with a crush, though. Yeah, a little bit. As happened, you have to blow on the dragon, although he did not, so curious. <laughs> so it was totally legit. It was okay. <laughs> well, it just, just reminded me of Arrested Development with George Michael and maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Let right. put your cousin's laugh real quick. Oh, watch for a road. <laughs> wouldn't it really? Wouldn't it really make our folks mad if we kissed? <laughs> so, Sir Vannon Rivers, uh, who has of late uh, been called the Bastard Justman, uh, which is named with some historical context. Um, would that? we know that context? <laughs> You would, uh, and, and you heard it uh, a few times on the on the way up and, and all that. Uh, house Justman was a noble house back in the days when the Riverlands were ruled by a king, like their own king, uh, that was king of the Trident for a time, um, which happened back then. You know, lots of different houses were the king, but they held it for a while, uh, and House Justman was founded by one Benedict Rivers, a bastard of houses Blackwood and Bracken. So there's a bit of, of history and special sparkle uh, around bastards of the Blackwoods and Brackens. Uh, they have a long running feud. There have been probably a dozen, if not more, bastards between them. They've tried to wed sons and daughters probably a half dozen times. It just never works out and actually settles <laughs> things. There are several sad, you know, sad romance songs about, uh, you know, Brackens and Blackwoods that cannot be together and, and all that. But, uh, but yeah, uh, he is, is on occasion. Uh, you've heard at various inns and taverns, uh, you know, the gossip on the road. Uh, about the wedding of that bastard Justman. <clears throat> uh, and there he is. Uh, and he is wearing nicer stuff than you're used to. Uh, you know, he's not in his his practical Doran climate travel clothes, uh, which are fairly, you know, light, but also rugged. He is clearly in dressed up clothes, 
even though the wedding isn't until tomorrow, uh, he's still kind of, you know, a big deal. He's, he's the groom uh, at his, uh, you know, the wedding, so he's definitely wearing, like, nobleman's clothes. Uh, but he is still recognizable. Sir Vernon, you look splendid. <laughs> ah, listen to the pot call the kettle. Uh, <laughs> uh, he says apparently without irony. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. And yeah, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt the, the stuff. So the story. <laughs> sorry, and go ahead. As you hear in close. Uh, getting a look at his his finery, uh, you see that he is wearing uh, yellow and black uh, as the primary colors, uh, and the sigil that he is wearing uh, is the uh, the red stallion of House Bracken, sporting a pair of black raven's wings, nice. turning it into uh, a, a Pegasus, uh, and and uh, yeah. It's uh, it's you know, pretty pretty sharp looking, but it's also like very clearly, like exactly the Raven's wings from House Blackwood, and you know what I mean. It's it's very distinctly been photoshopped uh, into existence, for lack of a better term. Uh, it is a clear uh, statement of of blood. So uh, apparently, and and you had heard that you know he's been kind of busy this last year or so. Um, riding around the Riverlands and making friends and visiting both sides of the family uh, and things like that. So uh, he looks looks pretty fancy. Pretty fancy. Mm. It's good to see you again. You look well. Ah, uh, and a visit by the famed Adam the Archer come to my very own wedding. Splendid, <laughs> splendid. Good to see you again. Ah, I think you've grown. Well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, it's been nearly a year, so. Luke? I want to extend a hand and kind of like uh, grasp his forearm and then pull him into a hug. Sir uh, Danny, my brother. He, he hugs back uh, and, and gives you a couple pats on the back. And while doing so, he is looking over Lucaris's shoulder at Bela. Uh, and he kind of he, he lets go of the hug with Luke and then just kind of pauses. <laughs> like, not real sure what to say here. And she just got married and I'm about to get married. How much does she even remember about that time I was high on Milk of the Poppy? And We have, uh, <clears throat> we have much to discuss, but um, I'll leave you two for a while and I will try to procure some bread and salt for my... Yeah. Uh, my traveling partners. And and well while, while this is going on, uh some Frey great grandson or something uh is running around in Frey colors. Uh and they've got the little uh you know bold slash tray. I'm going to to make to to make an effort of physically going yeah. to where he's at uh, and leaving uh, and, uh, this and stuff Al alone. Alisane is, is already over there. Uh little Robert is is chatting with his whatever the fuck cousin uh they seem to recognize each other and if not then maybe they just this is how young phrase talk they just assume like uh but yeah and alice is eating a little bit bigger chunk of bread than she's supposed to <laughs> she's just like nom, nom, nom. uh but yeah so the bread and salt is available uh and uh and then vanden just stands there uh looking you'd think perhaps faintly embarrassed uh, as he looks at Bela. Like, like maybe he feels silly about dressing up. Maybe he feels silly about this, this new beard uh, that, that he's, you know, working on. Maybe he wants to apologize for missing the wedding. Maybe he, you know, who knows? He just looks a little, a little off. Yeah, I think Bela is a little bit in the same way, uh, definitely some awkwardness coming from her side as well. Uh, but 
she remembers uh, that <laughs> she needs to say something. So she says, uh, Sir Vannon, th those colors look really nice on you. They fit you well. Uh, he, you suspect that's not uh, an imaginary blush uh, beneath that, that new uh, black beard that he is, uh, he is growing. Uh, and he remembers his manners uh, and, and gives a bow uh, and then just he says, and whatever it is you're wearing also looks fantastic. <laughs> does he say whatever and or does he, yeah, like he actually say? It, no, he <laughs> says it like that, just like while looking directly at your face, not anything okay. else you're wearing, you know. You, that boy you, has zero game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I've heard that you've been been busy this last year. Uh, well, uh, I fear I didn't bring a maester along uh, while hunting my bandits, but <laughs> word has already reached us of your busy year as well. Uh, fall of the Vulture King, John Sand, uh, would you believe there were people in the street cheering as he was marched north to take the black? Really? Even up here? Uh, the tale reached quite a few ears. Uh, fine work getting the Stormlanders to play nice, though, uh, <clears throat> apparently you've mastered that. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, I have. They, uh, they took very kindly to me. Shall we say? <laughs> Some more than others, from what I hear, Lady Bela Swan. Uh, and he sketches you uh, another deep and courtly bow, uh, but then straightens up and holds his arms out for a hug. <laughs> I will hug him. Oh, warm and strong. <clears throat> I, had, I had gone with Luke to take a bread and salt, but... I was obviously uh, torn, wanting to stay in Easter. Yeah. Uh, and we're so far away. <laughs> we can, none of us could hear anything. What exactly was the third word? No. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, he uh, you know gives gives Bela a not inappropriate hug, uh, and, and uh, now to slowly rejoin the group. Yeah, and then <laughs> you know turns and kind of guides her over towards the bread and salt, uh, and you know has a big grin beneath his beard. I think ah, I'll look back to, that way now. It's, yeah. good to have, it's good to have my southern siblings back. <clears throat> Should be back, oh. Mr. Man. Yes, and we're all very glad to hear that the last year has been kind to you. Uh, not sure how kind it's been, so much as uh, informative. Mate. <laughs> Did I hear some word of John for Sand and how people treated him? I, I'd be curious to hear more of that tale when we get, uh, uh, get sent down somewhere. Yeah, and this is as you lot are now like walking through a courtyard or anything. Uh, yeah, word reached us even up here about uh, the Sand Spears army and how it clashed with the desperate bastard Knight of Dorne huh. uh, and self proclaimed Vulture King. I heard there was 10,000 men on each side, and Oris did for a thousand himself. A <laughs> uh, two will fly here. But, uh, yes, uh, several bards have reached us, or, or several songs have reached us, and uh, it was a bit of an affair as he was marched north. He proved to be an honorable general for what it was worth. Um, would not risk his conscript for the king down to it. I intended to write him at the wall, but I've yet to find the proper words. Well, uh... I suppose Adam, pops, home... Adam pops up like Clippy. Would you like help with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, then it gives you a, a clap on the back. I suppose it's only because you have to write them down instead of <laughs> mutter, instead of mutter them to somebody in their sheets. <laughs> Indeed. It's so much easier the other way. Nobody remembers you do it wrong. <laughs> what's this? And what's this I hear about a wyvern wedding a dragon? 
Um, it's a whole thing. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. It's a. Uh... Luke is quite smitten. He makes a point of. He makes a point of kind of like like looking and, and he reaches out and kind of adjusts your collar. He goes, I don't even I don't even see the iron bands anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they they have been enchanted with her uh, magic, of course. Ah, womanly wiles of Dornish women. Well remembered. <laughs> she, um, Not easily forgotten. <laughs> she walked into my life by putting my cousin on her ass, and she put me on mine. So, I think I, I think I think things could work well. <laughs> yeah. And who, of course, has not heard about the coming uh, affair of the year? Uh, and he turns and and gives uh, Reyna a big grin, putting my wedding to shame. But uh, I hear half the kingdom's expected at Highgarden. It's a Highgarden affair. I wouldn't expect anything less. It was, I'm afraid Lady Elena is in charge of most of the planning. Quite out of my hands. <laughs> well, the good news is all you need to do is obey and I think you'll survive. You should have seen uh, grandfather when Lady Elena stayed um, down south uh, for a while. Oh. oh, as I remember, we didn't see much of them. <laughs> Behind Indeed. closed doors a lot of times they were. <laughs> Oh. Indeed. Well, good for them. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, I had the chance to meet uh, Lord Willis. Uh, there was a tourney down in the Westerlands, and he rode up to see to some horses, and I rode down to lose in the second round. Uh, <laughs> a lot of that going along. I'm going to reach a wine glass I have, and no one knows where it came from. Up <laughs> I like the idea that Luke always got uh, like a goblet on him at any point. Oh, definitely. Uh, uh, and, he, and he gives Reyna a warm smile. Uh, I don't know which of you is luckier. I think it's him. Well, we'll see. You're already one up on me again, Lord Van Sir Vannon, because now I have yet to meet him in person. Well, I suppose it'll just have to wait for the uh, bedding ceremony. <laughs> I'm already quite taken with the way his mind works. Good. And let's. I, I met two of his brothers. He yeah. is. Both he is them. not an anomaly. Uh, <laughs> not an anomaly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, you, oh. he's not the two brothers, but like yeah, he's, not. he's not a uh, yeah, the, the odd man out. Oh, it occurs to me. I might have to carry you with Sir Loris. Uh. What? To the bedding. What? Well, well do you want strangers to do it? To carry you up there? Did they actually do that? In Highgarden? Uh, Sir Vannon, they, they are quite taken with ceremony and tradition. Here in the north. He says oh. that part has a bit of a grin. I suppose I could put any animosity of Sir Loras aside for your night, sister. Don't trot me. <laughs> if someone drops you, it will be him. It's not going to be him. <laughs> Remember, Loras isn't the only brother. Like, like you know, there's there's yeah, out of character there's... good news there. It could be Garland instead. Could be Garland. Could be Garland. Could be both. And if they both drop you, I just then, I have to say that's gonna be a bad sign. And Felicia's just like, stay. You <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't want to be sweat puffing his arms. No Garland. one says you have to leave, Sir Garland. <laughs> stay here. I've seen this show, I know how close these siblings are. Oh my uh, god. That would be one hell of a night. Uh, <laughs> right? Woo! Not but, wrong. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, yes, uh, there is, there is banter, there is, um, you know, uh, flattery, up. there is some catching up, um. Rainer does not get yeah. the woo. 
Uh, someone okay. comes by uh, another little page boy uh, and tries to get Robert to, like, carry something, uh, and Alisane turns into a bear. Uh, and it's just like, uh, right. I need Literally my Literally or, or yeah. figuratively? <laughs> she just... She kinda, the, those you know, northern skin <laughs> changes, you never know. No. But yeah, she makes it very clear that her squire is needed in her service. And he will not be assisting you. Find some other second cousin to help you carry whatever it is. You're too weak to talk yourself. Damn and, you know, rah, 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 you know uh, and she, you know, is clearly, certainly still a little protective uh, of her lad. Um, but right. no other, uh, certainly Walter Frey isn't lurking with a held action to take Robert back. Or, or anything like that. Uh, I think you know, forgot straight. about him. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> May have. Uh, and he also is, you know, busy planning a wedding. He's getting rid of, uh, of one of his daughters. Uh, and that's makes always him happy. pause for celebration. <laughs> you know, it's, it's been busy. He's a busy man. He's not scheming, though. That was important. Uh, as a, a brief reminder, uh, the the bride is going to be Tita Frey, who is the fourth daughter of Walder Frey, his second daughter from his marriage to Alyssa Blackwood. So they are definitely angling for a Blackwood Bracken theme. Double right? up. Like it's, yeah. Um, so it's is that, definitely. Has that wife passed on at this point yeah that was God. years ago he's up to like the eighth lady walder Frey. i want to say are all these i mean so, is it just because he keeps putting babies in them and they die in childbirth uh it's also because he's really fucking old he is for um he is let's see if i can find an age on here real quick uh, yeah, he is. He was, he was born in 208, uh, and it is currently oh, like no. 299. Oh. So, three <laughs> something. Yeah, so he is. Um, so yeah, he is up to. Uh, yeah, I, I love this. Descendants 6.1, 6.11 with Para Royce, 6.12 with Sirena Swan, 6.13 with Amery Krako. Like, it's just like he has he has an, an encyclopedic. So, he's not old enough to remember when dragons still existed, but he was around during the Blackfire rebellions, right? I believe so. Um, and he he's might. Like, yeah, he's on his eighth wife. Has over a hundred descendants. I'm trying to think. When was the the, the tragedy of Summerhall? Oh uh, no! Yeah, oh, that you was, know what? That was he was he was he was, was there during the second nine. Blackfire Rebellion from the Dunkin' Egg stores, if I recall, as a kid. Yeah. Uh, so no, the uh, the tragedy of Summerhall was two fifty nine AC. So he was like fifty. Like, <laughs> like he was he was there for uh, for that last bit. Uh, you know, he was alive during the Dunk and Egg stories. In fact, yeah, they met him at one of them. I remember now. Yeah, I think it was and, the third one. Yeah, yeah one of the Dunk and Egg stories they met and did not terribly like him. Uh, but oh, yeah, he's he a nice guy. He's, he's, he's been around for a while. So he could have like great grandchildren and children growing up together. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, easy. He, he yeah. Does. Yes. Uh, yeah, that would be it's, uh, something. Right, uh, and that's part of the uh, the power of House Frey is that he's he's had so fucking many wives. There's and gotta be so something many in the like, water here that acts uh, like natural Viagra. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and the the uh, the eighth lady Frey uh, is an Aaron Ford that he married on his ninetieth name day. Jesus. Oh boy, that poor girl. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so there are, yeah, it's it's a mess. It's and and this is a big part of uh, it's. 
part of why he probably doesn't care very much about any individual one is because there are so many. Uh, he's just like, I don't remember whose you are. Remind me? Oh, yes, that's right. I hated your father. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, he just kind of... He has a lot. He <laughs> has a lot. Um, he's got to keep notes. Man can't remember all this shit. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he has maesters for that. Right? He doesn't, he doesn't need to remember any of it. So, um, has he ever stated... I mean, like, why is he so obsessed with with having all these children? I think he's I mean, just horny. It's yeah, uh, good for a noble it. house to have a lot of children. Yeah. How many, yeah, more, you know... The more to say uh, that you have... More... I think he's just puppet away while I'm doing his 90s and uh, doesn't care what the consequences. He has brought to House Frey single cockedly marriage uh, <laughs> bands... With House Royce, House Swan, House Craig Hall, House Blackwood, House Robin. Oh, you're House wrong. No, 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 no. You didn't Did tell I... me about this. <laughs> yeah, like the the wife, now, the, the, lady, the Lady Serena Swan. Um, I need to go have this? a chat with probably the Probably Baylon's a like great <laughs> grandmother. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, so the more descendants you have, the more people you can marry off into other houses and gain influence and so on. Or wealth, you know, just getting dowries. Yeah. You know, like, like whatevs. Yeah, um, I guess so. And also, he likes to put his pee, -pee in people, so... I, I heard that's pleasant, so... You couldn't have said that in a worse, in a worse way, it's just... I, yeah, he I could. could have. He absolutely I, could have. I have a list. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like how the, the kind of the G-rated way of saying it is way creepier than just. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine uh, being a a bastard to Lord Walter Frey? Like how little he would care about you. Right, like yeah. compared right. to like even a regular bastard. Of his right? eight wives, I was one of the. My mom was one of the other women. Yeah. Even uh, even if Bolton gives more of a shit about his bastard than Frey does. Um, the bastard Walder, uh, Sir Walder Rivers, uh, is the eldest of Walder Frey's bastards. Does not uh, narrow it down. Say right. his name. <laughs> but uh, and he's actually a. Um, like he's one of the most fearsome warriors among the Walders. He's respected outside of House Walder, married into the Charltons, um, and yeah, like he's actually a, a warrior of of some repute and Wait, renown. Wait, Black Walder? No, this is the Bastard Walder. Okay. Um, we're already so we're... getting into the diff like getting confused with which one's which. Black Walder, Black Walder, we met at. At King's Landing, and he was my he first was to... uh Yes, that so was. Boring. Yes, Black Walder Frey is, uh, is, is a spoopy. Yeah. Um, he is. <laughs> yeah. Um, he is the second. Son, he is a great grandson of Lord Walder Frey, uh, who is in his mid thirties. Jesus Christ! So, like, like you do. How is um, cancer not taking this man? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's scared to maybe. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it doesn't want to touch him. The seven, the seven uh, don't want him. <laughs> the stranger <laughs> refuses this yeah, place. Yeah, the stranger's like, mm, yeah. no thanks. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so yeah, just there are lots of phrase. You you are certain that there are you know, third or fourth cousins, whatever, um, that A, not only are like 30 years apart in age, but you know that there's some that have never met, right? Like, because like, they just married off so far away, all over the place. Um, and it's not like they get welcomed home very often, because he can't welcome all of them home. Right? Like, it's, he only has two castles and a tower. Like, he can't house all of them um yeah there's there's lots uh, uh but yeah so uh Alisane, uh, yeah so Alisane, uh protects uh little robert from a summons from one of them little robert is dressed up in his fray colors though like he did make a point of like putting on that uh like surcoat or, or and stuff to uh to to look 
you know, fancy uh, as he was returning home, but he is not quite sucked into the black hole of being just another fray uh, here at the Twins just yet. Good. Uh, the place is bustling. Um, it is, you know, there's servants running everywhere. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a it's a castle that's about to host a wedding feast, right? So uh, there are people everywhere, servants everywhere, pages running everywhere. Uh, a couple of knights are over there whacking each other with sticks. Uh, they're both frays, so it might just be an argument about, like, who gets to eat inside versus who's at the <laughs> supplementary, uh, you know, tables later. Um, they're, they're going at it with some training swords. Um, and there are also a lot of non frays uh, Again, you, you saw House Hayes, or sorry, Houses, Hay, uh, Vibrant, Charlton, and Aaron Ford. Uh, and you recall, at least certainly Adam does, those are all banner houses of the phrase. Uh, it was part of why Donald Hay announced, you know, he was the one that formally invited you. Um, it was, um, you know, uh, uh, Vanin's half-brother that, like, announced the marriage, but it was Donald Hay that invited you to the wedding because it was at the Twins. So... Is it, uh, is it Frey, like Lord Frey, like notoriously tight-fisted? Yes, he is. He is infamously yeah. uh, a spendthrift and kind of greedy and careful. Uh, oh. He is known as the late Lord Frey because he showed up too late to the Battle of the Trident. Like right. he made a big show of showing up with, uh, of you know, having an army arrive, uh, but only after the fighting was done. Uh, okay. Uh, I do want to make a point of while we're like <laughs> that while we're like walking around with Fanon, uh, I would like to make a point of like linking my arm with his while we're strolling and and being like I don't mean to be rude, but what what has possessed Lord Frey to host a wedding for one of his daughters? <laughs> it's the opportunity to make certain he's in the books written about the bastard Justman, I think. Uh, and a chance to show off his wealth even while he clings to as much of it as he can. Well, having gotten into the wedding business recently <laughs> they're not they're, they're, they're very spendy <laughs> and not nearly as exciting as tourneys mm, that's well, for sure that's, that's definitely sure <laughs> but uh, it's a different kind of excitement I guess but I mean our tourney did have a, its own quite a number of young ladies who were very excited about all of the martial action. It was eye-opening. Ah, you let them fight, did you? Let them. They wanted to, sure. But Good. those ladies didn't. The... Bela took the field. Mm -hmm. uh, Lady Valena took the field. Uh, of course, our cousin took the field. Uh, which one? The littlest one. Uh, small as Sand Snake. Elia. Elia. Uh, out of character, she's not the small. She's like, actually middle of the pack, but. Yeah. Well, she's, she's the smallest the one that I've, I've seen so far. Yeah, they're. they're but... Ah! Uh, Lady Lance, I think, was the name she settled on. Uh huh. Yeah, she settled on it. She chose that one. <laughs> Everybody knows at every opportunity that that's the name she's chosen for herself. <laughs> well, at least she got to choose her own, he says, with a little bit of a sad smile. True. And then, um, and then, of course, uh, Lady Alisane. 
Ah, well, good luck getting her not to fight. Exactly. Nodding over towards her where she's looming over Robert protective. Oh. <laughs> and our mystery night actually turned out to be Lady Brienne of Tarth. Curious. Uh, and out of character, it looked like Adam was trying to say something. Yeah, just, um, it's so, like, I, I, I didn't know if you were talking about the melee, because Alison Mormont was not in the melee. I was just talking yeah. about, in general. Oh. Sure, okay. Took the field could have been interpreted either way. Uh, but I do think she got knocked off a horse she at least knows. once. Yeah, she was she she jousted and stuff. Yeah. She does things. She does mm -hmm. things. But uh so the the girls were quite enthusiastic. <laughs> we even had a maester joust. Septon. Uh, oh I'm sorry. Uh Septon Jim. Ah, so the jib got in the saddle. Good, good. Ah, just my luck. Way up here in the soggy north while you had enthusiastic girls filling up <laughs> Robert's rest. Ah. I mean, they were all very much in charge of Lady Janna. Yeah, Lady Janna was in charge of that whole little contingent. Yes, but she made sure that they at least did the bare minimum of containing themselves. <laughs> She was marginally successful. Mm. About 80% of the time. <laughs> and then Cervana, there were the pool parties. Of course the fountains didn't remain empty for long. Indeed. Well, at least I know that you lot have been thinking of me. <laughs> uh, or at least Lord Makar has. From what I hear, it's Maelster Elston I have to thank for this name. The bastard Justman. It doesn't even ring well. And now you I just Are you are you saying that our Maester name gave you your name? Uh according to the letter uh that your grandfather sent, yes. Uh it was his suggestion. Uh, they helped. And he just well, waves airily towards everything. They he's like, helped. He's like <laughs> Half of this is from him and the Lady Elena, I think. Well, we are... Grandfather keeps us quite deliberately in the dark about the letters he writes. I don't get to read most of them myself. <coughs> I think that they are about us more than they are for us. Mm. Mm. I know that to be true. <laughs> Uh, but it does <clears throat> it, it does indicate that you still have a place in Grandfather Makar's grand scheme. Mm. I suppose the only thing worse than being involved in his machinations is not being involved in his machinations. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. Well, one moment, one moment takes off running uh and as he takes off running you guys hear a little bit of a fuss uh, across the courtyard uh and it looks like van has gotten almost prescient uh about this because he picks up on it before you guys do uh and sure enough over there you see uh, a bracken uh and a blackwood starting to shove and curse and get red in the face what uh uh, and you recognize uh, it's Lucas Blackwood from the tourney, um, the second married, or your second uh, full son of Lord Titus uh, that was uh, down at Ural's tourney, uh, shoving with some bracken that looks to be maybe 20, you know, uh, perhaps a few years older than him. And they're going back and forth a little bit, and then a couple of men at arms are starting to kind of half-heartedly pull them apart, and other men-at-arms are starting to shove, uh, and then Vannon wades in uh, with an open hand, uh, just like smacking and shoving. <laughs> he's, not, he's not punching anybody. Uh, he just wades in and is, is wailing on people with that big, long Blackwood reach, um, and everybody 
it, it's like somebody breaking apart uh, some snarling hounds, right? <laughs> you just kind of wade in and shock them into a moment of silence, and then it turns into like shame and obedience. Uh, <laughs> and sure enough, uh, he does, uh, and he, they, everybody stops, uh, and then as Vannon starts to raise his voice uh, and remind them of the the oaths they've sworn and and all that, uh, you notice that he makes a point of turning and yelling at his half brother before yelling at the bracket. Uh, it, and it's it's clear he's doing his best to to be just, one might say, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know cussing out both sides. Um, and then uh, he ends it uh, giving the Bracken a clap on the arm uh, and then I'll see you later Henry uh, and then slinging his arm around Lucas's shoulders and dragging sullen Lucas back over towards Yulon <laughs> there that, uh, in hindsight that's where I went wrong last uh, when uh, Ellie and Morris were fighting I should have cussed out Ellie first just waited in <laughs> Started slapping Open people hand. and then yelled yeah. at him. <laughs> around the air and be like, "What is wrong with you? <laughs> Why are you like this?" <laughs> uh, so uh, Lucas has the good graces to look a little sheepish uh, as he uh, is kind of half dragged up to you lot, uh, and Vannon's like, "There, now, you don't want to get another slap in front of the sisters, do you?" Uh, and that gets him to, you know, just shove Vannon off and threaten a punch uh, and then they both kind of break up laughing and Lucas is like uh, Lady Reyna uh, the Lady Bela Swan now and Adam and Luke uh, mm, sorry about that uh, and he kind of gestures over his shoulder You seem to get close to your siblings and uh, relatives, uh, Vannon uh, Vannon lifts his eyebrows and uh, just kind of huh? none of us had much choice uh, <sighs> Lord Tidos made it clear uh, uh, and then uh, Lucas <laughs> takes over like mid-sentence he goes he's the eldest among you and your brother now <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> and it's clearly a lecture that they've all received a few times now. Well, uh, at least one of you has a good uh, good taste in names. I'm going to extend a hand to, to Lucas. Um, <laughs> uh, and he, you know, he returns the, the handshake, etc., etc., etc. It's a pleasure to see you again, Sir Lucas. Hmm. And, and we understand that sometimes in close social events, stresses can be felt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've seen that a few times, haven't we? <laughs> yes. We have. Well, there's just a few centuries of Bracken's doing us wrong, is all. And now here's my brother about to get married, and that Henry's gonna go running his mouth just because Jono's Bracken can't spit out a trueborn son to save his life. Oh my god. Uh, the nephew feels a need to stand up. Uh, and so... <laughs> Popcorn appears from nowhere. And I was like, and he just, oh, you don't wow. say. Gossip. <laughs> I heard uh, of who spilt all this tea, but... But, enough but about records. Hoster! Hoster, come here! Uh, and Lucas, who's also, you know, he's three or four inches taller than Vannon, who's himself pretty tall. Not like, none of them are like bulky, uh, but they've got, you know, reach. <laughs> they grow big up here. Just like mm-hmm. across the courtyard, uh, Lucas suddenly hollers. Uh, and there's no question about who he's hollering to, uh, because the person that answers not only is very clearly like half startled, uh, but is gangly seven feet tall. Oh. Um, and, uh, oh, and then and then Lucas just hollers again, just like over everyone's heads in the busy courtyard. Bring Bethy over. Come on. Uh, and shortly, uh, you are joined. Uh, and uh, and Vannon says, 
This is Hoster. He's like Adam, but stretched. Uh, and, <laughs> and Hoster uh, says, oh, this one must be him. Uh, and, and doesn't like, doesn't like kneel down or like bend over like he's talking to a child or anything. But you can tell he is practiced at like stooping to try and not draw the eye despite being fucking seven feet tall, you know. Yeah, yeah and that's he's kinda like taller than even taller than Oris is. That's yeah. ridiculous. And tall. he's just just this long, skinny kid. There is no meat on those bones, you can tell. Like the he's wearing like uh, you know, fancy nobleman son's outfit type of thing. And he looks like a like a scarecrow that someone's dressed up as a blackwood, right? Like it's just there's no mask to him, so he just kind of hunches a bit. He goes, "Fan had told me all about you. Uh, I I hope you got the book we sent, uh, Lucas. You got him the book, right? Uh, uh, brothers. Uh, but I, I heard you got the book, and yeah. You know, and he just starts to natter away about um the shit." I know it was the it was the other <laughs> Riverlands history book, and now I'm gonna have to look it up. Yeah, but I'm like, he I, starts I, I, to like, talk to you about it. Because uh, I was going, oh shit, like I can't remember which one came specifically from. Yeah, uh, you got the Iron Chronicle from from Shella, uh, right? from Lady Shella. This one was uh, Archmaster Gildane's the Rogue Prince, or a King's Brother, a consideration of the early life, adventures, misdeeds, and marriages of Prince Damon Targaryen. So one of the oh, more yes. kind of infamous history books in, oh. in Westeros. Uh, and it looks like uh, the, uh, the unfortunately tall uh, <coughs> uh, Hoster here is uh, the one that, that picked out that wedding gift for you. Oh. And he starts to excitedly, like, without giving you a chance to say yes i got it and thank you right yeah. like no there's no time for that he goes what sure. did you think about <laughs> chapter three with his interpretation of the and he starts in about you know like just he assumes that you've read it and that you also have it memorized like he clearly does oh. Right? Oh. <laughs> in the last in the past eight months adam will have definitely read all of the books he got because he just reads like a maniac um yeah. He probably hasn't like memorized it to the extent that Huster like, clearly has, but he will at least have a, enough familiarity that he will know what's being what he's talking about. Yeah, and, and he just starts in with someone who's even nerdier than Adam. Yeah, and he goes, "What? <laughs> what's, what did you think about Maester Kildane's rather sunny uh, explanation for the formation of the Gold Cloaks?" Uh, when clearly, even in Mr. Kildane's time, they had shown themselves to blah, 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 you know, and it's just like, and, and he just is, you know, clearly. I'm probably trying to answer, but the next question's coming so quickly. <laughs> yeah. By the time the sound of your answer reaches him up there, like he's already started the net. Yeah. So uh, you are left with the impression, uh, A, that, you know, Hoster's a good kid. Uh, Perhaps a bit, I don't want to say like slow or socially awkward, but more used to reading than talking to people. You think, yeah. uh, and and also uh, that you know Van had clearly been talking about you lot uh, a fair amount um, to his natural born siblings, um, oh, and nice. and then uh, you finally notice because she was hiding behind his leg the way a three or four year old does, except that she's ten, but he's seven fucking feet tall, uh, is a, a young girl with the telltale blackwood streaming black hair. Uh, and, uh, and as she finally kind of peeks uh, around him uh, from behind his cloak, uh, Van and, and, and Lucas both kind of give a little... <coughs> Uh, and she does a fancy curtsy, but her eyes are saucer wide as she's staring up at Reyna. And she's like, you must be the Lady Baila. And, and you look so fancy and strong. And, and, and I heard you got to lead an army. 
Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, she is so cute. What was her name? Uh, uh, hanging her Bethany. Bethany. Uh, and you, you think she's 10-ish, uh, given the Blackwood height. Uh, you know, she could be 8, she could be 12. Uh, but looks 10-ish uh, to you. Uh, and yeah, she's just staring up in awe of Reyna and talking about Bela uh, <laughs> flattering. <laughs> I'm like... I'm like... I'm Bela. And I'm like... Uh, I appreciate... You're guessing. No. Uh, I am not the tall, strong one. That would be my sister. <laughs> And then she looks back and forth and back to Raina. Goes, that means you're the Lady Raina. You get your own castle. Uh, I like she's clearly just like in equal awe of both of you. Uh, like she just kind of saw Raina first. Like, right? So it's it clearly, uh, and then she just starts to like back and forth from each of you. And, and she's like, and Vanon told me about the time. Right, and it's it's this childhood adventure and that childhood adventure, and that time you stole the horses from that bandit camp. Did you keep the horses? Were you nice to them? Is that one of the horses? And you know, just like all these little, like childhood things that uh, you know, Vanit has clearly been sharing, and she, like without a doubt, like glommed on to the stories about the twins. I love her. Yeah. <laughs> we need to adopt her as well. <laughs> like, ask her uh, to be your handmaid and she'll probably say yes. <laughs> uh, and, and about three breathless paragraphs in, um, she says something, something, you'll get to have Wyvern's rest. Uh, and then she kind of sighs, goes, I've never seen Wyvern's rest. This is the farthest I've been from home only ever been about a mile away before this week. Riverlands is big. <laughs> the Riverlands are quite large. Uh, but Dorne has a vastness of deserts and mountains that you will hopefully get to see one day as well. Uh, and she looks kind of wide-eyed uh, up at uh, Lucas first. Uh, her, the brother she has known longer, um, and then Lucas just kind of tosses his head towards Vanon, uh, and then Vanon kind of realizes that he's where Thank the buck you. has has stopped, <laughs> uh, and he goes, "Ah, uh, well, I, I don't see why not. If Father will let her ride through the bracken-infested lands of the the Riverlands." Uh, since the Vulture King's been so clearly ousted by the brave warrior women of Dorne, uh, I, uh, perhaps we could travel down there. Look was there, too. <laughs> oh, yes, I know. <laughs> I was going to look at Adam and shake my head. You are also being left out of the story, like me, so that's why I'm looking at you. I'm fine. It, it, like it doesn't only to be about me. At two, Adam. At two. <laughs> I'm just enjoying. The, I'm, in, I'm. I'm here for the vibe. <laughs> I don't know what the Westeros equivalent of that is. <laughs> uh, and Vanin's mention of the Vulture King being beaten uh, freezes uh, Hoster and Bethany up for a moment. And then they both start it. Hoster uh, starts to immediately ask Adam about the final battle, and how did it compare to the bottle of Redgrass Field? And I heard that the blah, 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 and, right? And he immediately just like switches gears to talk about a different book. And then <laughs> Bethany starts to breathlessly go, I heard they let you fight, no, just lead the army, and that you fought the Vulture King, and that you, Right, and you fought his bandits before that, <clears throat> and then you got to tell men what to do, and boys never listened to me, but knights and such had to do what you said. And, and like, they both just, like, immediately, like, lock up and then switch gears 
to talk about these more recent stories. Uh, so it's very clear to you that not only has Vannon been telling stories about growing up in Wyvern's Rest, uh, but that your your recent stuff has spread, right? Uh, you know, word of your exploits, you know, that status bump you guys have recently gotten, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that's not just in Dorne and the Stormlands. Like, so clearly a lot of this has uh, has carried pretty long distances to folks that had nothing to do with it, right? Like, the Riverlands are what? It's like Crown Lands and then Riverlands. Like, they're a whole ass fucking realm away yeah. <laughs> from the Stormlands. Um, and they're, you know, talking about it. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and we can add in that uh, a maester is writing up the, the tale, and there should be a book before too long. Uh, and Bethany looks disappointed. I like songs more than books. Hoster oh, likes books, though. Oh, well, have you heard Sir Marin Kent? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, and actually, Vanin goes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they changed that one to rhyme with grunt by the time it made it up here. <gasps> oh, wow. Uh, okay. Understandable. Not in front of the children. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I'm, I'm sure there will be songs. Uh, I'm really looking for this song new version. I must look. <laughs> yeah, I have to hear this, this version. Hear this regional variant. <laughs> now, now I need to make one up. It'll be pretty easy though, because you could, you know, something, something, you know, of the King's Guard litter, he's clearly the runt. Uh, <laughs> when, when he when he faced the sand spear, she <laughs> gave him a punt. He, yeah, he, he got quite beaten. Uh. But then it's gonna end with, and that's what happens if you call a Dornish cunt, right? <laughs> like you can you can move it in that direction. I just need like like one more unt uh, to put in there in the middle. But you guys get the gist of it. You know, like blunt, like he's so lucky their weapons were blunt. Maybe you know, like something like that. I'll, I'll just start making up words <laughs> eventually. Well, like, that lady also Baelid, for a run. she was out for a hunt. Right, and that's what hunt, happens also... when you call Dornish a... Yeah. yeah. And, like, you've also got uh, Boros Spons? Blunt. Because uh, mm. it could also be, like, he's the worst Kingsguard since fat Boros Blunt. Right? Or something like that. Like, you could play that uh, in there. Ah, double right? insult. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, this, this is easy. I can... I yeah, that's you know, all day. <laughs> um, we could just make up songs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Vanin kind of adorable big brother E, uh, which he hasn't really been before, but you're left with the impression that he has fallen into it quite well. Um, well, I can certainly uh, you know, uh, tell stories about the battles later on. Uh, after dinner, perhaps, when there's a fire on where we've got some drinks, and, I can retail some of the, the battle. And Hoster, in the middle of talking to Adam goes and like as though Adam were talking but he goes uh, one moment and he turns to Bailey and he's like yes uh, perhaps if I could bring something to write with uh, we could we could write it down as though fresh from your memory uh, instead of the unreliable narration of a maester that was there uh, terrified in the midst of all of it there would be competing versions of the story and he's, now. And he's now <laughs> all excited and like, but yeah, like without missing a beat, like in mid sentence to Adam, and then he suddenly just goes, Dah! and <laughs> like turns. Uh, uh, Adam just being like, why like, am I being shushed? What? I was not looking. <laughs> well, well, Adam, you know how I hate to to talk about <laughs> the the campaign against the Vulture King. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, Wait, well, while this is all going on, I want to check on uh, Lady Gwyneth. She's here with us, right? Lady Gwyneth is with us, yeah. She's in your retinue. She's been uh, largely staying close uh, to your handmaiden. Wait, one second. 
I, I will go and escort her since nobody wants to talk about how great I am. Only Bela and everyone else. <laughs> It's like, it's not always about me, so I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm out of here. Um, and she's just uh, just kind of looking around, you know, wide-eyed and making sure that she is not in the way. Uh, you know for a fact that she has never left Dorne before, uh, you know, much less come this far, uh, you know, north. Uh, she mentioned it a few times. Uh, and now here she is in, you know, this huge keep. Um, and it's busier than she's used to um and a worried sliver of your soul it occurs to you that probably the last time she saw a castle with this much activity going on was like during the siege like right before the battle at ironwood uh Uh, so she might be a little nervous but she also just might be a young girl that's far from home. Yes. Yeah, I will attempt to eh, give her some championship and take her mind off that um, by offering, uh, Lady, I will find you your quarters. Uh, Philea gives you a, uh, a grateful little curtsy and then kind of ushers her along with you. And it's a it's a pretty simple matter to uh, Glad I find haven't someone. been super boisterous about the slaying but... of Lord Ironwood. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. in front of her <laughs> and now you can be um <clears throat> so iron uh, wood was a, I don't know I don't have any right don't, uh, don't. Get him. uh so uh it's a fairly simple matter uh for you lot to uh, get to your quarters and and be kind of shown <laughs> where you're staying uh and you're all in the same hallway which sure isn't a, a coincidence. Um, you haven't seen Lord Walder. Uh, you're just, he, he doesn't seem worried about personally greeting everybody or, or anything like that. Uh, and you're like, oh, he is like 90, 91 yeah. years old. So like, he probably is going to be like, eh, they could come see me if they need to. Right? Like, that's fair. Um, but you haven't seen him. You do... Uh, see Black Walder Frey uh, stalking through a hallway, almost Darth Vader-ish. Uh, <laughs> like, it's that same, just like, walking with purpose, right? Uh, and you're like, oh, yeah, no, I remember him. He's not, he's not a nice guy. Um, but he doesn't, like, doesn't, like, say hi, right? <laughs> if I see him, I will definitely say hi to him. <laughs> uh, he gives you a a, a furrowed brow for a moment. It's like, who is this? And he goes, oh, yes. Uh, and yeah, just, you get a, a nod. Step up over him so he recognizes. <laughs> yeah. you, uh, you get a curt nod, and then he keeps walking to wherever it was he was walking to. Um, Reminds me of someone. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, and then that's about it. And I'd say that, you know, getting your quarters... Uh, reminds you that you are fresh from the road uh, and that uh, there's just enough time to get cleaned up before dinner. Yeah, definitely going to wash up and put on something nice. Yes. Now are the siblings sharing uh, Like sweets? Or, yeah. Um, Like... Let's go... Yeah, the sisters are sharing a room with their handmaiden as well. Mm-hmm. Flea will be in there with you too. Huh. Uh, and uh, the brothers each have their own room. Okay. None of the rooms are like, you know, splendid. None of the yeah. rooms are awful. Oh, uh, just... There's a lot of people here. Yeah. Good news for Lickwind, they can bring company back without waking me up. <laughs> <laughs> And Philea can't. Uh-uh. Oh, sorry, oh, Philea. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Philea. Right? She had uh, a very successful week. <laughs> and she she Girl never <laughs> and she never flagged in her handmaiden duties the whole time. Like she's I don't know, it's just impressive. <laughs> she's like uh, getting back tonight, we'll understand. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, 
So, uh, meeting in the hallway again, uh, prior to heading down to the Lord's Hall uh, for dinner, uh, you're kind of all, you know, you step out and you're like, ah, I feel good, I feel clean, hair still maybe a touch damp, uh, but I'm in, you know, finery instead of traveling clothes, and you look out down the hallway, ah, ah here comes Luke, uh, and ah, yes, more silver hair and, and the marine colors, uh, and then you look over and you're like, ah, yes, there's... Uh, there's Reyna with that silver hair, and, and uh, nope, 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 there's Adam with his silver And you count silver-haired people of Valyrian blood, uh, it takes a moment, and you realize that Uncle Orain Waters is just standing in the hallway <laughs> with a goblet of wine. Uh, says, ah, there we all are. Uncle we're Orin. In, we're sharing a hallway, it would appear. Perhaps the dragon wing, if you will. <laughs> and I will. Uh, and he takes a drink, clearly looking quite pleased. Already with exhausting. <laughs> uh, glory, I've not see seen you since, um... Adelia seemed disappointed. At Adam's name oh, day. You, I'm sure you didn't see me anywhere near the time she was disappointed. Unless <laughs> perhaps it was after I left. A spry woman, your Aunt Elia. <laughs> yeah, yes, she indeed. was definitely heart sick. Yeah. Uh, and strong, too. Yes. Maybe there's something to letting women fight. Uh, those shoulders. Yeah. Ah. Hmm. Yes, uh, dreadfully sorry I had to miss the end of the tournament. I didn't want to be there. So... <laughs> I didn't want to be there. Yes. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> Wow. Uh, what do you even say to that? You know? I guess if, 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 if I'm feeling a little bit catty, it's fine. We didn't even notice you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> Apology retracted then, and we can all get along just fine. Water <laughs> under the keel. Uh, hmm. Yes, uh, here we are, though. Uh, the dragon swing. Uh, someone write that down. Adam, you like that. Uh, so, uh, it would seem that they thought it best to send a bastard uh, to the bastard's wedding. Uh, though, I guess with you lot, they didn't have one. Uh, but, it's good for the four of you to spend time together. Yes, yes, quite right. Indeed. Did you happen to bring any of that Nymerian wine with you, nephews? Uh, I would not have left home without some. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I really warn you, if both you and I drink at it, it may not be enough to last. Ah, uh, best you stick with the local brews, then. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, have you heard word from Uncle Monford and his son? How fair is the child? We were having such a pleasant conversation. I apologize. It's been on my mind if we traveled north. I wish we... Would have had time to stop by, but it's not exactly on the way. He he is. He, he definitely puts on airs of being callow and foppish and not caring, but you know that he does care about Monteris. Um, so yeah, he actually, and Luke has a genuine concern too. He actually swishes his wine and downs the last of it. He goes, uh, some of those associate doctors made it to Driftmark. Uh, the generous Lord Monford was kind enough to let them leave with their lives when they weren't able to help. <sighs> Valyrian blood is getting rather watery in some of us, I think. Uh, but, no. Uh, Monteris has grown a bit worse, if anything. Uh, last year they tried taking him somewhere with drier air, and then they brought him back to Driftmark, thinking uh, the sea salt would be good for... Uh, the air to drift mark. Um, nothing seems to be very good for him. I... In, in fact, uh... Oh! Phileia! Uh, and he just walks right past you in the middle yeah. of sense and, and off to the twins' room where Phileia I, I... is leaving. <clears throat> After uh, having cleaned up after you guys, you know, since I was a little bit behind. Luke cares to realize after he brought it up, like, he killed the mood, but was also concerned. 
Is it, it really did, thing? yeah. And then just, you know, let it go. And, and go and make sure some of the, the house wine is brought out. Uh, yeah, wow. And, and Uncle so Orang, he just, he breezes past you lot uh, to stick his tongue and fillet his mouth. Uh, and they share a rather passionate embrace uh, that is clearly not an, a warm and affectionate hug. Uh, and then they come up for air. Um, and, uh, and She needs some better taste. He's quite pretty. <laughs> but, that's about the only thing yeah, he has going. Yeah, that's really all he's got going for him. <laughs> Philea gives you a, like, She's like absolute, sometimes absolute. that's enough you know right. like she, just, she just gives you like he seems to not even hear any of the uh <laughs> just like, whatever i've i decided not to fuck my nieces so i don't care what they think of me you're pretty <laughs> sure that like that's the thought bubble right then it's oh just he's like actually i'm on the high ground yeah <laughs> it's, it's somewhat reassuring for adam to know that like no matter how embarrassing he is to the family, he's not that embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't know the All right, very well. We will catch up with both of you later. <laughs> I believe we have dinner. Uh, or we won't. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, no, I haven't ate yet today. Dinner first, then dessert. Uh, and then Orin kind of starts to not quite flounce away. Uh, and then he just gestured. He goes, uh, "Luke, you'll bring a bring a bottle to dinner, will you?" Yes, Uncle. Good, uh, good, good. I'll be sharing it with someone. Uh. I know. I'll bring it for you. <sighs> the wine uh. that we bought isn't going to last the night, is it? Uh -uh. Uh, and mm -hmm. he he breezes away from you lot presumably towards the feast hall like he walks like he knows where he's going that doesn't necessarily mean he does you're pretty sure like like he'll just say he meant to go wherever he ends up uh it, it works sometimes uh <sighs> what we'll hope to do is that our dragon wings hallway will uh join with a larger hallway at some point and people will be going a certain direction <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's it's not terribly hard yeah. uh, to make your way there. Um, you know, you 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 know that the Great Hall, in this case called the Lord's Hall, because Walter Frey, uh, it tends to be central, right? And so you're just kind of making your way back towards the middle of the castle. Mm -hmm. uh, and sure enough, uh, there is dinner. Uh, and it seems like, uh, again, this isn't a proper feast. This is feeding guests that may have arrived at different times. So um, people are, you know, you, you see some people in the hallways with plates of food heading back to rooms. Uh, you see a bunch of pages and squires uh, precariously carrying trays out to whomever and this way and that way. Um, and as you round the corner to the great hall, you see the, the, the throne first. Uh, it's a great big chair of, of dark wood carved in the fray sigil. So like the, the two castles are, are like the, you know, the main uh, kind of wooden structure uh, of it. Uh, and sitting in that is <clears throat> someone that could only be Walder Frey or a mostly bald version of Grand Maester Pycelle. Like, that's the only two people you can imagine looking like that. Uh, so you don't think anybody shaved Maester Pycelle uh, while insulting him the whole time? He's not slowly introducing anybody, so... So there's a... Uh, he's just kind of a hunched, wrinkled fellow that is looking over his hall full of guests with the same look that grandfather gets um, if a if a taste of wine is a bit sour, right? Just that little bit of a curled lip of like, nah, this is not good. And that's Walter Frey watching other people eat his food. 
and, <laughs> and, and drink his wine and uh, his mm. ale. And he just looks faintly displeased that this many guests actually showed up to partake of his hospitality. It's just like, Dah. And you can tell he's probably thinking, like, that, that one's just had seconds. <laughs> and, right? Like, stuff like that. Like, uh, he just looks a little unhappy at, at people in his hall. Um, and he is a very, very old man. Uh, mottled skin, wrinkled. Hair is thin on top and, like, wispy around the sides. Uh, a little stringy. Uh, standing near him is a girl that looks far too young to be standing near him. Uh, she's Adam's age, perhaps a year older or so. Uh, and that is the, the Lady Frey, you're pretty sure. Um, because she's wearing Frey finery in a way that the servants and stuff are, you know, they're different Frey colors. Uh, and she's just like standing there, like behind his chair, like ob obediently, like a piece oh. of furniture. Uh, so she's just standing, um, and he's not, like, talking to anyone. There's a big spread of food in front of him uh, that doesn't look like it's been touched. Like, he just insisted on getting food on principle uh, and hasn't yet decided to eat it. And probably when he does, he'll be like, ah, this is cold, right? Like, so he's just, he's, he's oh. just, a, he's just an, an immediately kind of, dislikable fellow. He, he just doesn't look very happy. But you also uh, see Uncle Orain. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll circle back to him. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Who's noticeable? Oh, uh, the strong boar. He's here. Lyle Craig. Lyle Craig. Oh, hey. a difficult man to miss. We like him. And <laughs> And he might be like half the reason that Walder Frey looks put out by feeding his guests. Right? Like, he like has a ham like by the you know like like the the kind of cartoon ham that's like the big leg right? <laughs> that you always see in you know picture. This is ham. He's got like one of those by the bone, like a turkey leg, right? <clears throat> and he's alternately chewing on it and then like sword fighting with it to to show. Uh, how he recently beat someone in a fight. Um, uh, so he's he's easy to spot. Uh, near him is uh, Sir Donald Hay uh, and Sir Leslin Hay. Uh, you recognize Sir Leslin. He's the only Hay that's older than Donald. So Donald the Secondborn, that must be the heir, right? Uh, and, and those guys are all just really pretty tall. Uh, you know, they're not big like the strong boar, but they're tall. So it throws the rest of the room uh, in kind of weird perspective, right? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, there's uh, Sir Damon Viprin, uh, the heir, uh, is, is off there eating, and uh, Sir Willis Wode is over there munching on some food. Um, and and the hall is more empty than, than full. Uh, so your gaze kind of sweeps around. Uh, and then you see uh, not far from the strong boar, uh, is, uh, the lady Gemma Frey, who used to be a Lannister. She's the sister of Lord Tywin. Uh, she is a very curvy lady. Uh, she has gotten rounder in her middle years after, uh, having some, some, several children. Uh, but, but she is still not, you know, old by any stretch right uh and she is sitting and and picking at her meal um and sitting near her is um uh a young lady uh that her she's wearing uh a mixture of of fray colors uh and some dairy garb uh and uh hanging out with uh lyman dairy who at one point there, they are kin. She is Jane Derry. Um, these are all people that, again, you guys are supposed there's a weird pattern of people always recognizing and knowing people, so that's why I'm giving you names also, right? Um, not terribly far from then is another Craig Hall. Uh, the lady, Melissa Craig Hall, 
who is now a fray, wed to Lionel. She is Gemma Lannister's daughter, uh, married into the phrase, just like Gemma Lannister married into the phrase. Um, and uh, they have a squire with long blonde hair with them, Tion or Tyon. Which do we prefer uh, as a... Is that, is, is that an I or a Y? It's, it's T-I-O-N. I'd say that was probably Tion, because... Tion? It's certainly in the naming yeah. scheme, a Y is usually an I sound, like Tywin. Sure. Whereas, like, yeah, I think if it's an I, it's going to be an E sound, probably. All right, let's go with Tion. Uh, so that is another son uh, of the Lady Gemma. And then in the Lady Gemma's curvaceous shadow uh, is her husband, a natural-born Frey, uh, Emin, who is supposedly uh, the daughter, uh, or the daughter, the son of Para Royce, uh, one of the earlier wives of Walter Frey, but you've seen Royces, uh, and this guy is a very small, thin, ball. he's just a clone of his father, uh, basically, and you're like, like, are they sure she was the mother, right? Like, like that's not a Royce. Like, they're they're stocky and, and impressive. Yeah, Royces like, are a little more filling in your arms. You're like, you look at Eben Frey, and you're like, there's no way he's got any of the same blood as Oris, right? Like, that's not, I don't know. It's, I don't think she was the, the real mom. Uh, so he is as completely dominated in the conversation uh, as he is by, like, size. Uh, she is uh, loud and, and cheerful, and uh, she interrupts the strong boar's story uh, with no doubt a ribald joke uh, that draws laughter uh, from most of them. One of the, the folk standing nearby uh, does not laugh. She's a young girl of 12, maybe 13, with hair that is nothing but Lannister gold. Uh, and she's kind of sitting, um, picking at her food. Doesn't look terribly happy or comfortable here. She doesn't look like she needs help or whatever. She's just not part of the good cheer. But uh, everyone else, including the you know the strong boar himself, uh, lets out some big belly laugh at whatever sidelong comment uh, she made. Um, yeah. And then further down that table, you see the stark silver hair of the bastard of Driftmark, your uncle Orain. Uh, who is currently already pouring a bottle of wine into a pair of goblets, uh, one for him and one for a small man who's also got that Lannister gold hair, uh, but uh, who almost looks like a child sitting in this great hall, and you realize it can be none other uh, than Tyrion Lannister. Finally! We get to share great time with the imp. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't like what you called that. The imp of saying. Casterly Rock uh, is sitting and drinking uh, with your uncle Orain, uh, who has done him the courtesy of sitting down, at least to not be even that much taller than him. And you are left with the distinct impression that regardless of how recently these two arrived, this is not their first bottle of wine. <laughs> I feel a table calling my name. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Uh, Talk about bad influences. Right? I think they're great influences. <laughs> oh. I'll look stable compared to both of them. I don't doubt that you can have a really fun time with them. The, the only problem is when it becomes a, a habit. Mm. Well, uh, Bela, would you say you could do anything a knight could do? Um, well, I cannot father a child, so not everything, but aside not from that... Not a requirement to be a knight, to be fair. <laughs> oh, wow. And That's where fact, you want to kings, start? In fact, the Kingsguard, the best knights, are specifically forbidden from doing so. So, like... Yeah. In a way, you've kind of got a leg up on most. Yeah, of I, yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying that's not, that's not a, that's not a thing that you have to worry about. Well, I, I believe I've shown that I've bested 
a few nights already, so I'm not terribly concerned. Very well. Then if I drink too much, you will escort um, the Lady Gwyneth as a proper knight should. Thank you. <laughs> Do you hear a problem now? <laughs> Lads, lads, lads. I, mean, I have a feeling that I will be telling stories all night, so uh, we will see how things go. Sir, <laughs> I did pee somewhat, but still. Yeah, I, I will watch over the girl. It's fine. But he really wants to go over there. I don't want to go party <laughs> at the party table. But I want to be over there. Uh, the food that is on display uh, and available this evening is um, a uh, fish and onion creamy soup, maybe stew. Like it's it's a creamy broth with chunks of fish in it and and some onion that gives it all a sweetness, uh, and then just rolls. Like that's basically it. That's what's mm. that's what the meal, the not feast. For tonight you know, is just. I'm just hungry get, enough for that. That sounds great. I'll get yeah, some soup, I mean, get some bread. It's very similar to the the Cullen skink that uh, Adam served on like the first uh, the opening feast of his journey. Uh-huh. Well, it's got, anyway, it's got potatoes as well as all the other yeah. stuff. It, this whole thing sounds similar to how we just did meals in the middle of the yeah. tournament, right? Yeah. Where it's kind of like come and eat as you can. There's food available. Just that so there's, sort of thing. Yeah, so it's not super formal. There's not assigned seating, that kind of thing. No, mm. just people are hanging out. Uh, there are empty tables if people like want to sit alone. Uh, and if not, there's that assortment of Westerlanders fray tangled, right? Is kind of who seems to be hanging out here. Uh, and Uncle I'm Ray. tired of these motherfucking frays in this motherfucking castle. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. We came to their yeah. house. Yeah. <laughs> where they uh, live. <laughs> I, the, uh, the array of them there uh, is Craig Hall, uh, or sorry, the Strong Boar, and, and Gemma Lannister are kind of the, the loudest, most boisterous in the middle of the table. And then, like, on one extreme is the quiet young girl, and on the other extreme, uh, sitting far away from her rather chivalrously, is Orain Waters and Tyrion Lannister. Like, they're the far end of the table from the impressionable young girl is the uh, the layout. So that's kind of it. You can sit by yourself, or you can grab some soup and join in I, anywhere on that table. I am definitely grabbing some soup and some rolls, but also grabbing a bottle of house wine and heading to the party table. All right, so we're going to have... Let's go, Luke. Party end of the table. Uh, Adam, where do you think you're going to end up? Uh, I, I'm going to say that like Adam is slightly concerned about like the state Luke's going to get himself into, so we'll probably follow nearby. All right. Uh, oh no, my nerdy brother's coming to the party table with me. <laughs> Red. <Rana. laughs> well, you, you... you can tell me not to. <laughs> I just realized how much of this is like high school drama. <laughs> It's fantastic. Like, get out of here, freshman. <laughs> what? My dirty brother's here? Oh, no. Uh, where's Reyna <laughs> planning to head? I think I'm curious enough that I will s- I'm will. i going to sit near the, uh, the Lannisterian girl. Okay. And Vayla. Uh, it's such a great uh, word. I'm, I love it. I'm getting soup and rolls and drinking... Uh, whatever the the fray drinks might be uh, beer they, whatever they have uh, a beer and a rather watery wine uh, i'll go for the beer up for grabs uh yeah. today yeah um it's, it's, not, it's not great wine country <laughs> uh, and he's also probably watered it down <laughs> like, yeah. yeah and then, more may have been good before he had like, two parts uh, water to it like more people fine more wine uh, you know, as he's pouring buckets to of water. Fair, in, to like, be fair, to be fair to him, he has an unlimited supply yeah. of water. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and then I will, I will take a seat in the the center area of the table with the boisterous, rambunctiousness right. of 
the Craig Hall and uh, the bro Gemma, table. The Gemma, Gemma, technically Frey, but always a Lannister, right? Is um, so okay. That is where we will pick up when we come back from our mid-session break. So let's just take uh, you know five or ten or whatever the heck. Uh, we'll be back in a little bit for some role play.
Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we have returned Hello. from our breaks. Uh, and we're gonna go back to hanging out here at the Twins under the watchful, paternal, protective gaze of Lord Walder Frey. Huh. Uh, a man who could do no wrong. Don't you dare touch his thermostat. <laughs> don't, don't touch his thermostat. It's at 82 for a reason. Yeah. He's not cool in the whole Riverlands. Yeah, I'll <laughs> sit in my recliner. This is my chair. Uh, I mean, that part's pretty normal, actually, in, you know, Westeros. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, you guys are, and he hasn't, like, there was nobody announcing you guys uh, because this is just kind of dinner, right? Like, so he hasn't got anybody bothering to, uh, you know, like, there's no, like, big thing as people show up. Um, so you're all able to go and get your food and relative, uh, you know, alacrity and then make your way. Let's go first with the young blonde girl end of the table. Uh, oh, that's why me. did you look all panicky? Like, uh -huh. also, your hair looks dope right now. <laughs> it look, it looks like you have a mullet. Ah. I was gonna I say would... pompadour. Pompadour, yes. definitely. It's very nice. It's it Johnny be... Bravo with us. It's just being <laughs> held up in a really weird way by the, the headset, but, but I dig it. Uh, so yeah, uh, she is. Uh, a pretty girl. She is uh, not wearing the colors of a house officially, like there's no sigil or anything, mm -hmm. uh, but she is wearing very finely crafted clothes, mostly of red with some bright gold thread uh, and, and, and trimming type of stuff, but it's not got the lion on it anywhere or anything like that. Okay, well. Um, who might she be? Uh, well, with that new information of, of realizing, you know, even now seeing her from the, you know, the other side and yada yada, that she's not wearing the house colors Mm -hmm. uh, you're pretty sure uh, that that is the natural-born daughter of Garion Lannister, the youngest brother of Tywin. So that would make this Gemma Lannister, or well, sorry, Gemma Frey, uh, her aunt, uh, and Tyrion, her cousin. Uh, you can't recall the name. You remember hearing that he had fathered one not long before... He, he vanished, um, but you can't, off the top of your head, remember the name. Um, well, Raina is, uh, is wearing, uh, wyverns, so, <laughs> and house colors in, uh, the white and the gold, and, uh, their weapons worked into pretty much everything, her jewelry. <laughs> like Lannisters and their lions. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you're pretty recognizable as yourself. Um, and are you, like, sitting opposite her? Yes. At the table, or? Okay. I will sit opposite her. Um, she glances up as you sit down, uh, and then kind of looks down demurely and then you realize that it's it's her like stopping and thinking for a moment uh, and then um, she does this kind of half standing curtsy thing without quite leaving her bench um, and she doesn't quite like make eye contact but she then clearly is looking at you but not right directly in the eyes and she goes uh, your apologies Milady, I'm not certain if you are the Lady Reyna, heir to Wyvern's Rest, or the Lady Bela, a warrior of some repute. Uh, but I, I know your house colors, even if I know your face not. <laughs> well, you find yourself sitting across from Lady Reyna. 
that Lady Bela is over there. <laughs> and she kind of sneaks a glance. Ah, uh, uh, Sir Lyle spoke of her on the trip here. Uh, I am not surprised uh, that they will seek each other's company. Oh, my, my apologies, my lady. Uh, I am Joy Hill. Joy Hill. Well, Joy. Uh, and, and again, she looks 13 ish. Okay. Uh, what well, is a pleasure to make your acquaintance? How's the stew? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's. Uh, and she kind of. You can tell she's speaking carefully. goes, It's different fish uh, than we have uh, out west. Uh, I don't know. I suppose I never thought uh, that they would taste so different. Uh, the freshwater versus saltwater fish. Uh, Cousin Tyrion was speaking about something, something, classification, something on the way here. But uh, Aunt Gemma told me not to listen very often when he talks. Uh, so I'm afraid I missed out on the details. Uh, and she says it with, like, the the most mischievous smile a bastard girl can get away with, right? Yeah. Like, like, you're sure Tyrion is in on that joke, etc. You know, like, it's right. no, there's no malice behind it. Um, but, yeah. Well, Brandon will actually laugh, because <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> but, uh, well, in case it comes up while we're here, that one is my brother Luke. Lucaris, and you should probably only listen to the first bit of what he says when he talks to you as well. Duly noted, milady. Uh, <laughs> ah, <laughs> that Orain Waters is your uncle, isn't he? He says, like, looking at the two of them, uh, you know, next to each other. Yes, yes, he is. <laughs> to listen to none of what he says. Yeah, <laughs> says yeah don't was... ever talk to him at all. <laughs> Good advice. Well, uh, and, and here she lets out a bit of a sigh. That may be difficult uh, if the rumors are true that Lord Tywin seeks a marriage with someone from the Crown Lands. Uh, oh no! I don't think they are. They are both bastards from old and wealthy and prominent houses. So it might not be the worst match for either of them. Um, like, okay. on paper, right? Like, like if on you, don't, paper it sounds you fun. don't know anything about either of them, or if you don't care anything right. about either of them, it's a pretty good match, right? Right, right. Uh, so she doesn't say anything rude, that's her con. It's just, it might be difficult not to listen to him if Lord Tywin finds this marriage from the crown. She well, says kind of carefully. In my limited experience with my uncle, I find it's actually easier to, tune, to, to not listen to him the longer he talks. <laughs> well, if, like, I, if I may, milady, uh, Perhaps an Imerian can afford to ignore him more than I might. That, well, he also is, what, what is, what is, he's a waters, so, uh, and you're a hill, and your family actually, te I mean, let's, let's be honest, uh, has more of the king's favor than ours. And certainly the queen's. She says with a, a very polite bow. Absolutely, the queens. Queen tolerated our presence in King's Landing, but uh, she did not like me giving a gift to her daughter. <laughs> yeah, but but she does not uh, approve of us. <laughs> uh, there are those that. How did Tyrion say it? There are those that see silver, and it makes them see red, I believe, uh, was the bit uh, that he half sang to us uh, when Valerians came up. And, and that is absolutely 
the case that I found. Although, I, I have to admit, we, we, King's Landing was quite pleasant for us. It wasn't as terrible as I was expecting. There was... Only two accusations of murder. <laughs> I, I have not... And more yet. importantly, done yeah. treason. Yeah. Right? Uh, I have not yet had the opportunity to visit the capital, so I may not speak on the grandeur of the city itself, but I can say that as I've received warnings of how to take King's Landing, I've also received warnings about those with Valyrian blood, and let me please say, milady, that so far, perhaps two minutes in, uh, I have not felt threatened by Dragon's Flame even once. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, to her credit, we're not serving uh, Dorish Dragon Tempers. Right. Um... <laughs> I, I it is like, uh, have brought a bag of them. Uh, <laughs> Some people bring like hot sauce with them when they go to like restaurants. We just bring like a bag of dragon peppers. Right. Yeah, I reckon that's, that's... a guy who lugged the bag all the way up here. Mm. They keep uh, well. So then she lets out uh, a little sigh. She says, uh, "Lord Tywin had heard that." A, a prominent rivers could wed a proper fray uh, and I think perhaps he thought that there might be other natural born children here seeking such marriages ah uh. and like out of character it might not be the worst plan if you had a bastard to get rid of to like go to a wedding between a bastard and a true oh, born and a like bastard wedding right um well, I was recently in a position to uh, peruse quite a number of eligible bachelors from the kingdom in general. <laughs> peruse, did you? Interesting yes. choice of it's words. It's called Tinder. Um, just... <laughs> uh, we Wait, were. Only for Nymerians, it's Winger. <laughs> Winker. <laughs> you swipe right on a raven, and then yes, and uh, I don't. I, I think there are there are definitely options available. <laughs> well, if I may, my lady, I think you have a few more than I do. Well, I now only have one, uh, which is a good one. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but there are, well, there are benefits uh, to your status that I don't enjoy. So, uh, rather than argue, she lets out a very careful, as you say, milady. Yeah, yeah, uh, I know. Kind of looks <laughs> away again. Uh, That's true. She. Ah. Uh, uh, Hate to do that, but hmm. Mm. How old is Uncle Arain? Is that like um, in his thirties? Something like that. I think I'd said he's like thirty-ish. Was was what we'd kind of settled on. Uh, not super sure. I don't know what sort of pressure. Uh, who is it that he reports to? <laughs> is uncle, uh, like, he's our uncle. Right. But how is he related to Valerian? He, Valerian? He is the, the half-brother of Lord Monford Valerian, also your right. uncle, uh, who is the Lord of Driftmark. Right. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What are you thinking? Uh, what am I thinking? I, I yeah. don't know what I'm thinking. Uh, and, and remember, to do with them. Uncle Orain was a contender for the hand of the sweet lady Bela. Well, I know. Courted Briefly. her extensively. He had <laughs> no intention of marriage. Uh, yeah, I, for I, what it's worth, you're pretty sure that at least as far as Orain is concerned, <clears throat> she is not at current threat of betrothal. Right. Uh, and that if Lord Monford did try to order Orain to marry someone, he would probably just leave. 
Like he would just, he yeah, would right? just and fucking leave. He would just like steal a boat and go away to Essos or something. I, I like, well, yeah, I mean, but he would probably steal some extra, you know, like you take <laughs> take take a few more. Uh, but yeah, so like you're go full you, pirate. Yeah, you don't think that Joy Hill is in any danger of uh, leaving the twins uh, betrothed to Orain Waters. Yeah. Although, I'm not sure our concern was that he was going to marry her. That is not my concern. My concern is that <laughs> I don't think he'll despoil her either. He tends to like, I mean, from what I have seen, which was limited, he seems to prefer more experienced ladies. Likes <laughs> his fruit a bit riper. Yeah, which is fine. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I like him with her. It's fine. It's I, knew, fine. I knew it was going to get someone. <laughs> I miss you with the bills. I want some guys. So your mom, did you see anybody? That's so life? How, how's that going on? <laughs> uh, wow. Oh my God. Can we move no. on, to, please? Okay. All right. Uh, anyway, I I uh, I'm looking around and I'm like, I don't remember who else here now because there's quite a list. Uh, uh, it was like. And all right, you got Orane Waters, yeah. Tyrion Lannister, yeah, your brother, right, your sister, right, your other brother, yes, Adam, the strong, the, the strong boar, right, was the second son of Lord Roland Craycall. Uh, Gemma Lannister turned Frey, and her overshadowed husband Emmon, uh, along with three of their children. Uh, who are, I mean, mostly older and married. One of them is a squire that is here right now. They said also the Hayes were. Uh, yeah, and then, like, the Hayes are, like, they're not, like, at the table, right? Oh. Like, I kind of had the, some of the, you know, the other, like, uh, Donald is, um, and, oh, yeah, okay, so, yeah, he and Leslin are both, are, are both there, sorry. Um, but, yeah, like, like, most of the other Riverlanders that you guys haven't met and we kind of don't care about, like, are off by themselves. But, uh -huh. yeah, the Hayes uh, do seem to have been, uh, and may have literally been pulled into arm's reach by the strong boar who, you know, met Donald at the, at the, the tourney. So, yeah, so, right. uh, but, yeah. Uh, but I remember Donald, I remember Sir Donald from the tourney. Yeah, uh, he was the tall, kind of gangly Riverlander. Yeah. That looked, that looked faintly surprised to win. Um, and he didn't ride poorly. He just wasn't an exceptional rider. Uh, you know, he, but he, you know, a fine knight, just not a great knight. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, sorry. I just looked at chat and saw the Restoros book. <laughs> Comment. Uh, so, anyway. <clears throat> Honestly, if I were choosing based on just what I know on about my uncle, I would I would probably uh, guide you closer towards uh, anybody else. Yeah, Sir Hay, Sir Donald. Uh, he seemed an okay sort when we met him. I mean, he seemed a, a honorable sort. When we met him at uh, Wyvern's Rest, uh, Sir Lyle did boom something about him being a champion. Uh, he was a champion for a but while. But <laughs> he is also a hay, not a rivers or a hill. I'm fairly certain uh, that Lord Tywin does not seek to offer offense to any house by suggesting me as a match above my natural born station. Ooh. And you can tell she's speaking very carefully. And like for 13, that's not bad. That's you know, really but like good. she's could... just she's weaving really it well. pretty well, you know. Uh, you also know that she has only called him Lord Tywin, not uncle, uh, which you suspect is practiced uh, as well. Like, like, he may have corrected her once or right <laughs> something like that uh but it's always been lord tywin 
uh, it was Cousin Tyrion and Aunt Gemma, but it's always been Lord Tywin. Right. Just a small thing I want to make sure it was. Yeah. Well, I doubt you'll be, uh, hmm, pressured in anything this, during this particular wedding. Um, but oh, were I you, I would keep your ears open and your eyes and observe everyone <clears throat> for uh, well I don't know who is taking care to broker marriages in your family other than Lord Tywin um, but Tyrion is here but also your cousin Gemma is here and she seems a little more Aunt Gemma but yeah Aunt Gemma but uh, she seems a little more um Approachable? Okay. <sighs> well, yeah. if you happen to have handsome knights of appropriate natural born status falling off trees uh, in Dorne, perhaps you can write to Casterly Rock someday. Especially if you can draw good pictures, <laughs> she says with a <laughs> bit of a, a an, an appropriately salacious, uh, you know, little little hint of a smile. Send dick pics. Yeah, right? She's like, she's like, she's like take, take dick pics and just forward them to me. Well, let's be honest. I, I, I most of the bastards I hang out with are, are, are female. Um, oh, and... uh, the sand snakes, I think they're called. Correct. And, and the other bastard I've spent much time around, I mean, one's getting married to the, like tomorrow. <laughs> And uh, and the others pretty much unavailable. Physically, I don't know. <laughs> the, Sorry, I'm, here. I'm chipping in from the same place. Sorry. The stories that we've heard of the sand snakes are rather daring, but seldom complimentary. By the time they reach Casterly Rock. Daring is definitely more a oh, de good descriptor for them than not complimentary. The sand snakes are, uh, as a unit, unpredictable and spontaneous and dangerous. She, she sighs wistfully. Uh, like Individually. As any siblings, they uh, they are a spectrum of personalities, but they are they are an experience. <laughs> and they are actually all warrior women, and you're truly the heir to Wyvern's Rest. <laughs> I am the heir to the Wyvern's Rest. And my sister, Lady Bela, Swan, which <laughs> still is strange for me to say, is uh, is our general of sorts. She she led our she led our our forces into battle against the Vulture King. Uh, Gorn, Gorn is very different than the rest of the seven kings. It is. So it's sounding uh, a little glum. Uh, yeah. I, look at, I look at her arms and like her hands and does she seem to have like any kind of muscle to her or is she just, a, a, you know, a young girl? Well, who's... I mean, she's, she is a 13 year old girl. Uh, so she's pretty covered up. Uh, right. You know, like right. she's not, she's not Aunt Elia going around in a fucking crop top leather armor. Right, like, like she's, she's her, she's got you know long sleeves on and, and stuff. She doesn't look like small for her age or anything like that. Uh, and what you recall of uh, Gary and Lannister uh, tends to be things like uh, Jamie Lannister, like okay, let's say this uh, 
very careful jokes that Jamie Lannister is uh, uh, is Gary and Lannister's son, not Tywin's. Right, that sort of joke of a, a favorable comparison between Jamie and, and Gary on. Oh. Um, so he's an out of character. We've never gotten a physical description of him other than Lannister gold hair because he's never been in any of the books. But like he uh, is also the. Uh, so he like the adventurer you know, brother. He he was the kind of bold <laughs> adventurer one. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily. Um, the burliest of them, but all of the Lannisters uh, of, you know, Tywin and, and Kevin and, you know, all the brothers are, you know, uh, capable knights, or, or rather were, you know, I guess I should say, but, you know, they're, they're of, uh, you know, solid stock. Um, so she's not, you know, small. Uh, or anything like that. Um, well, you're young enough. You could still learn arms. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know that that's available to you because of where you are. <laughs> I can assure you, my lady, it is not. Uh, what? What about like? You're right. I apologize. You no were... apology is necessary. Uh, uh, we are simply from different places. But we can still share some freshwater soup. <laughs> and... and really watered down wine. <laughs> Do you know they use the same water, the water down the wine, as they use the water down the soup? <laughs> and, he, uh, and she does like wrinkle her nose when you mention the wine and kind of yeah. nod a little bit like it's as close as she's going to come to saying anything bad about the about the food you know but um, but yeah like you know with you know Tywin is, is clearly and and well, and you know Kevin are both past their prime but especially the younger two Lannister brothers were pretty renowned um, so you know, she's she's not the bastard daughter of the most martially renowned of those brothers, but like, you know, we, we also didn't hear anything about it. So she's like I said, just kind of average girl of 13-ish. Uh, you know. I'm a little depressed by this, but <laughs> um, out of character, if you wanted to get along better with the Lannisters, um, it would not be rude to seek her service as a handmaiden. Lord Tywin, in particular, would probably put some sort of yes, and also a trade route, right? Type of type of shit, um, you know. But like, that's why people go off and squire and handmaiden and stuff is to strengthen the bonds between families so like you might uh, you know ask uh, and, and of them here it would be Tyrion right uh, as the you know male Lannister that is present right it would um, I, I think if anybody would be approached as a broker for her future at this setting it's going to be him yeah. um, so you know it wouldn't be impossible to like leave with her as a handmaiden uh it wouldn't be impossible to leave with her brother uh tion as a as a squire um he just seems to be of squiring age uh but you know drag need a squire. Uh, we're but, the squire so yeah just saying it's not you know um yeah the, and the, uh, the handmaiden thing if you guys are interested uh but you let luke know like for lady valeda that could be a thing, and actually, maybe something she's interested in. Just and, the whole beating door know, and fighting oh, ladies okay. and stuff. Yeah, the Lady Bela is also uh, without handmaiden at present because Philea has stayed at Wyvern's Rest. So, right. like, you've got, you know, socially, you've got plenty of excuse to we can inquire. kill this girl. 
Uh, and you've got the wealth and prominence that it would not be seen as any sort of insult. Uh, that said, it it's it's may, far away from the know, area be, where he wants to marry her off. Well, it's not even necessarily about the geography. Just remember, the Martell and Lannister history is not great. So it may it would not be seen as like an insult, but it may be seen as some sort of threat, right? <laughs> like like taking let true you know uh, taking those of Lannister blood away to you know closer to where your uncle is, you know. Uh, but she but what is if he went also she is also just a bastard. So <laughs> if you were to offer good you know favorable trade rates, uh, Tywin might see it as an acceptable risk. Like, hmm, yes, we'll feed Dorne joy, and perhaps bygones can be, you know, like, like who knows? Yeah. Uh, it, it can legitimately, like, be kind of framed as a way to, like, mend the old wounds a bit. And I'm all, we're all about that, aren't we? This we generation. Are, yeah. And you guys have been, you know, working uh, towards a reputation for that. So, like I said, well, it's well, it's... Uh, it would not be a, a simple affair, necessarily, uh, but it would not be unusual or out of line or, or anything like that. I'm also kind of guessing if she handmaidens for Bela or possibly Lady of Elena, that's also kind of basically squiring for her? Right. Yes. It gives right. her an opportunity to possibly stretch those martial wings of hers. If she's got any hidden under the Lannister gold. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, if I you think all I, don't approve, yeah. let me know and I'll, I'll do something. But yeah, I think yeah, that's absolutely. the first call here. Well, uh, if she goes to Bela, then Bela is spending her time between Wyvern's Rest and. Will. Stonehill. Will. Will, sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 that might work. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. we've got another girl I wouldn't mind stealing. Uh, you know, we Bethany. Just, girl. just we, that's what we do. Oh, little, little quiet Bethany. Shall we, yeah. shall we get one handmaidens for the table? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about, I'll talk about it with Bela and, and Luke and, and Yeah, Adam, so, and so so far, of the four of us, we've only had like your conversation at the table so far, and, and now yeah. oh, a I'm lot so of out yeah, game it just, it's just talking. also gone longer than I was expecting it to. Like, you, I was yeah. looking for Lannisters that might travel for a wedding, and you're just like, I love her, we're yeah. taking her home. We're so, still on her, yeah. Sorry, um, go ahead, continue. I'll, the rest, I mean, right now, Raina's pondering, so. Sure. All right, so you'll yeah. settle in to eat and small talk? Yes. And, okay. Uh, well, then let's move to the middle of the table. Uh, and this was happening kind of at the start of, of Rena's conversation. Um, is As you approach, uh, the strong boar uh, lurches to his feet. He goes, ah, there she is. <laughs> the most dangerous Dornish women since some fucking history book. Bela, come on. <laughs> Uh, it's great to see you. Uh, see, Gemma, I was telling you. Look at those shoulders. Mm -hmm. uh, all different body than yours, I mean, but they're both still good, but... Ah, damn it, woman, you know what I mean. Uh, and it's just, she fought knights, uh, and, and he has clearly been regaling them with all sorts of adventures uh, from down in Dorne. Uh, Gemma does stand and give you a, a polite but shallow curtsy because it's not like she's uh, like lesser right you know but she does follow the... strong or two. Yeah. uh and Gemma is you would guess mid 40s uh you know she is you know that generation not yours right um but she you know gives a, a polite curtsy um and then she reaches out and she pinches Emin uh on the arm and he's like eh and he looks up from his suit, which he was like slurping very unappealingly. Uh, and she just reaches out, gives him a mean little pinch. He's like, eh! And he jumps up and, oh, uh, yes, uh, 
Nice to meet you, uh, Lady Nymerian. And he clearly mumbles the first name to, to make it clear he does not know which of them you are. <laughs> and instead of guessing, he pretends and just lets out this little little mumble. The bow gives you a better look than you want at the top of his bald head. And uh, he's got like a sad little like comb over attempt going on that's not terribly different than Walter Frey. Um, you know, in the, they're, they're clearly balding, thin haired, and he just he looks like somebody that has been completely bowled over by her for the 20 years or whatever that they've been there. Like, he's just, and then he kind of glances to her before he sits back down and, like, he is just, he has been broken uh, a long time ago. Um, yeah. It, 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 is, it is very clear who that sounds who, like a healthy marriage. <laughs> very, very clear who who runs the relationship. Uh, well, I will return the courtesy, of course, and uh, take my seat. It says, uh, "Pleasure to meet both of you." Uh, and Gemma sits back down. Says, oh, I'm sure it's all ours. We don't get very many Dornish up this way. Yeah, I've, actually, this is the first time I've been so far north. Uh while you're chatting a little bit uh, their son, uh, Tion who looks 14 or 15-ish you know, kind of middle squire age um, he is he's not glaring at you but he looks a little put out uh, maybe a little resentful um, uh, and it's, it's, again it's, he's not like saying anything uh, but he's just kind of got a little bit of a little bit of a pinched expression on his face. No uh, one introduced a little him. bit of a squint. <laughs> uh, well, no, he's just a squire. Like, whatever. He's not. Oh. He's not a people yet. He's. He's just. He's still young, and she's not out to marry you to him. So, like, whatever. It's just. Oh, it's too late. Miserable. That ship is sick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so she's like not interested. You know. Um, but yeah, uh, she is perfectly pleasant, uh, and she is. Uh, she's. You know, a, a loud woman full of, of good cheer um, that can clearly get away with a lot with her husband. So she's like, whatever, I'll talk about what I want to. Uh, she goes, uh, Sir Lyle, uh, the whole ride up here, uh, told us over and over uh, about this queer tourney he'd gone to full of fighting women. That's uh, it's right. Uh, it's tradition in Doran and anyone who is interested in, in fighting is able to so um, and often uh, women perform better than many of the men as well I mean we all have heard that that's the custom there uh, but I suppose seeing it uh, with his own eyes and uh Perhaps a few other body parts, if half his stories are true. Uh, <laughs> he, he made it clear that he was thinking about running away self. So he apparently quite liked uh, the scenery in Dorne, let us say. <laughs> I remember and that. And she, like, she adjusts her posture at the table to like hitch up her ample cleavage uh, a bit, you know, uh, in case there was question of just what she did. I seem to remember he also enjoyed the spicy peppers of Dorne as well, as <laughs> he performed quite well in a an eating competition of uh, <laughs> spicy food. And, and then I like didn't nudge shut him. up about that either. <laughs> uh, but uh, men and their appetites, uh, and she just kind of sighs wistfully, um, and yeah, throughout. Uh, Tyon is he's just kinda just kinda glaring a little, a little brooding, maybe, and just think he's not terribly pleased by your presence. Uh Lyle Craycall for his part is uh he just seems to you know, like you guys hung out together, you, you yeah. drank together, uh so like you're good with him now, you know. Hung out, we drank, we fought, we did all of the three things. Yeah, like unless you, unless unless you fuck it up, like he seems like he's gonna be okay to hang out with. Uh, 
And once there's no immediate conversation going, uh, Sir Donald Hay uh, also comes over and, and kind of awkwardly bows because uh, he just does things awkwardly. Um, and it says, uh, Lady Bela, I'm glad that, that, uh, that, that you all attended. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you for uh, delivering the invitation. Uh, we are happy to be here. I, I, I told Lord Walder uh, that I would be more than capable of doing so, and, and he was certain that since uh, Lucas was also there, uh, between us we would manage. Uh, and, and, and we did. Uh, but yes, uh, all four. What a, a pleasant surprise. I know it's, it's quite a trip. It, yeah, it was, it was quite a trip. We, uh, we enjoyed seeing the, the countryside much different than our home in Dorne, uh, but just as beautiful in, in a different way. Uh, and, 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 uh, easier riding, I think. The, the heat was very hard on, on oh. the, the horses. And he's, like, clearly talking about himself, right? <laughs> but he's, like, uh, he's knight enough to make it, like, about the horses, not himself and the other, you know, riders, you know. You know uh, so, uh, yes, fine countryside uh, for a ride. Uh, perhaps we could go for one uh, tomorrow. Uh, we've got until the, the ceremony. Uh, we could get, uh, get plenty together. Oh, that, that sounds delightful. I don't... Um, I don't think Lord Walder has many festivities planned. We can we can make our own activities. Uh, yes, quite right. So that leaves us uh, leaves us with with idle time, uh, and and perhaps uh, a few of the knights that couldn't make it down to to Lord Adam's tourney uh, might uh, learn a lesson or two in the in the yard as well. Uh, they've been less than chivalrous uh, with Sir Lyle and I telling stories, uh, telling stories about the tourney, uh, and maybe setting a mm. few of them on their ass would would set things <laughs> right. And, and... Well, it has been some time since I've gotten the pleasure of knocking men on their asses, so uh, <laughs> it, if that needs to happen, we can arrange it. And he's not like like gesturing at anyone in particular or mm. anything like that. It's just you you know that the background radiation is going to be Snickers <laughs> when yeah. the fucking strong boar is like their women are dangerous. Right? They're like yeah. sure whatever. Like like how drunk were you? Uh, you know, like you know. So uh, you get the thing, and then probably even worse when a, a you know kind of awkward Donald Hay is like, no, oh, they're really good fighters. And they're like, shut up, scarecrow. Right? Like, so, uh, like, you know, you get the feeling that it's just been uh, nobody in particular. You know, he doesn't, like, point out anyone. But, uh, because you can't just, like, point to everyone, right? Like, yeah, just, yeah, like, it's so just, widespread. Know, because, out. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but, yeah, and he looks pleased, like, All right, uh, then, well, then, uh, then, well, 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 we'll see the lot of you tomorrow morning, and I'll, I'll spread the word with some of the lads. Uh, which seems to just mean, like, every one younger than 40. Uh, right? <laughs> just mm -hmm. because the lads covers a lot of ground with knights and heirs. <laughs> uh, you know, and yeah. Uh, Even if he only meant the Frey family tree, I mean, that could be <laughs> <laughs> scores of people. <laughs> yes. Uh and and with that, like he looks pretty pleased with himself. He goes, "Well, oh, but but uh, I'll leave you to your soup." Uh, and oh, um, oh, ah, uh, hmm. I guess the servants accidentally put up the the black pepper. Uh, never mind then. Uh, anyways, uh, I'm off to talk to the lads. Uh, so okay. off he goes. He was gonna try and give you a culinary hit. But Lord Walder made them put the pepper away a, a while ago, so okay. there's a daddy for you to. He was, he was gonna be like, the, the soup's really good with some crushed black pepper, but 
or, or not Lord Tywin, Lord Walder. Uh, Lord Walder <laughs> clearly let a few people eat some pepper. <laughs> it was like, no, take it back. <laughs> Like, it's probably pretty expensive. So. Right? So, like, he, made, he made a show of some being out on the tables earlier. And then, like, <laughs> while the food is being served, they're like, here's your soup. And then they pick up the pepper and, like, take off. <laughs> you know, just don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can have. Everyone gets. Everyone gets one, one smell. Yeah. You'd be horrified at our tourney, like you you're just giving people cinnamon. <laughs> you're just like what? <laughs> uh, fools. That's why your house will die. You know, <laughs> and, and I'll be lord forever. Uh so yeah, he uh um yeah. So it looks like you were gonna get some, some good natured local advice on how to spruce up the the the, the soup a little, but uh, yeah, we missed it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and off he goes, and he just like heads over to the some of the other Riverlanders, uh, and and yeah, he vanishes into the the background, uh, sounding excited about you know getting to hang out some more. Um, anything? Let's see who else is in the middle. Like really, not a lot of excitement to be found there. You know, it's just uh, yeah. a a a boisterous. The f- true-blooded Lannister and her henpecked husband, uh, and then you know their son, who's a squire that just looks a little, a little surly, a little surly or sullen. Um, so yeah, not uh, and and because you are no longer on the market to be wed, one of the number one topics of discussion uh, between. <laughs> A woman of her age and a woman of yours is off the table, so it's just kind of like hmm. she's like, yeah, I don't, I don't have a whole lot else to, to you know, uh, to, for her to talk about. All right. Well, I think between uh, the strong boy and myself, uh, it, Bill is definitely accustomed to strong women, so it's not a a difficult yeah, it, thing for her to to navigate around. And it is kind of cool uh, to see, you know, like she's clearly not a warrior, but she still like clearly runs their household, right? And you're like, so like, you know, even up north, some women find a way to, yeah. you know, to be in charge. Um, uh, and it's certainly not the partnership with Balin that you have and are looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Uh, he often does still defer to you and in in a way that you'd think it might just be he's more accustomed to following orders than giving them like just kind of as not the firstborn son uh he's you know and without the responsibility split that you have where you've always been of a more martial bent than reyna so you still have some of the kind of authority that the heir normally does like you get the feeling that you know you've you know balin is just a little more used to playing a supporting role um, but he certainly isn't Emin Frey, uh, about it, you know, and, uh, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, Strong Boar, um, goes back to, uh, talking about, uh, some bandits that he scrapped with since returning from the tourney and, and mm-hmm. waving his ham hawk around or whatever that <laughs> ham body part is called. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's boisterous but not unpleasant yeah I can match that just fine (laughs) uh, and then the two that went to the party end of the table just before we were about to cut to the party end of the table have vanished or tidy one is back let's also uh, wait for Ash or uh, does one of you want to do a thing from the Discord chat while Ash is still away? Oh, never mind. All right, Ash is back. Fuck you guys. Yeah, let them do uh, something. <laughs> so, uh, yes, to the party end. Uh, Luke arrives with, like, a bottle of wine tucked under his arm uh, and, you know, carrying his food and, and this other thing, and uh, Adam is is behind him carrying probably a bit less food. Uh, but not much. <clears throat> um, and you 
Uh, you make your way over, uh, and Uncle Orain gestures breezily towards you uh, with his goblet, uh, and then goes, ah, here they are with the good stuff, and downs Uncle what Orin. remains of his goblet uh, <laughs> to, to empty it. Uh, and uh, Tyrion Lannister matches him. Uh, it's like, like he, you can tell he kind of thinks for a second. It's like, it is a good call. Right? And then they both thunk their empty goblets down. Uh, and like as you are just barely within arm's reach, Tyrion, without introducing himself or saying anything or whatever, he goes, oh, here, let me help you carry that. And like leans way over in his chair and grabs the bottle of wine from under your arm. I will let him grab it. Um, uh, I'm gonna say, Uncle Orin, uh, Lord Tyrion. We know each other not well, but we've had drinks before in King's Landing. We have, uh, <laughs> though I think you were yet a squire then. Have uh, you learned to drink like a man now? Uh oh. Some would say we will find out, though. I suppose. At least, uh, we will now that the good wine has arrived. I would say kind of quietly, like conspiratorially, like, uh, uh the good stuff's arrived. Uh, and what was, what was that, Ash? Oh, sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to talk over Robert. I was just saying, depends on oh. what, what you think a man drinks like, I guess. <laughs> that, that, a sign rather than an in-character comment. Well, I think in this case, it's frequently. Um, it's how it In large, in large yeah. quantities, probably, too. Right, uh, and uh, my brother Adam, who no, knows Adam the Archer. Um, yes, uh, speaking of men, uh, I had heard, whether I wished to or not, simply by being within roughly a half mile of the Strombor, that I missed quite the tourney. <laughs> my congratulations on uh, your uh, name day being such a resounding success, Lord Adam, and uh, my congratulations on what I hear was an impressive new library that the strong boar, of course, did not pay any attention to. He simply <laughs> said there were a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Tyrion. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to meet you, and yes, my library did uh, flourish as a result. Excellent. Hopefully my father will call me a man soon, and I can get some free books. Uh, and then he gets to work on the cork, uh, uh, and uh, pours himself first, and then looks around and, I'm and, kind of a cop, so he can give me some. Um, and as he gets the, uh, you know, little nods from everybody, uh, he is not uh, stingy with it. He doesn't like pour himself like right up to the brim and then like <laughs> splash a little at everybody. You know, he, he tries to portion it out fairly equally. I, I have uh, brought um, several gallons of what my men would be willing to carry. So have have your drink, sir. Excellent. Uh, well, let's try to get it even. Um, and he's pouring for four. Uh, so, uh, as a new goblet arrives uh, from just off screen and is thunked down uh, next to Adam's, uh, he goes, stretch the bottle to five, if you can stretch much at all. And as you turn to spot the new voice, Adam, you turn and right here, uh, <laughs> you, like you sit down to eat, so you like you turn, uh, you recognize that leather crotch. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn Corbray just happened to be standing uh, a, a saddle over the bench that you sat on. Uh, as you as you turn and look, come to think of it, Lord Tyrion, fill my glass all the way, please. Uh, and Tyrion, for his part, just goes, "Oh yes, it would be nice to let you drink since it's free." Uh, and with good cheer and banter, just returns Corbray's barb, uh, a way that you think a knight couldn't get away with, right? Like, <laughs> like if Tyrion wasn't. Uh, the imp, uh, and was a knight instead, he and Lynn would probably be challenging each other for shit, but instead they seem to just both be getting away with it just fine. Uh, but yeah, so sure mm. enough, there's Lynn Corbray. Lynn Corbray, it's been a while since we fought. <laughs> Standing on the over side. you. <laughs> um, give me a minute. 
<laughs> Don't introduce myself. Uh, it's, it's been a while since we fought along the same side, if I recall, last. Turning uh, the, uh, the trial by seven. We have, uh, and things turned out rather splendidly for you. Though a Dornishman did die, that just happens. Because well, Engel did, yes. <laughs> Uh, things turned out for the best. Have you been keeping busy? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Though not uh, slaying... Well, I suppose you didn't slay the Vulture King. Uh, not arresting any Vulture Kings or the like. Uh, I've heard that you lot have been quite busy. Gave your sister to a Stormlander, I hear. Yes, I didn't intend to, but he was so persuasive that I had so little choice the matter. I see. And um, you. Uh, and then he finally, like, settles down uh, next to Adam. Uh, and, goes, and you, how went your name day tourney? It, it, it went very well, thank you. No unpleasant and unexpected bloodshed. Um, no, um, there, un understandably with the, the number of different houses and loyalties present, there were, it was not without some tensions, but they were dealt with deftly by my sister and myself, mostly. <laughs> oh, no doubt they were terrified to cross the Lord of the Melee. <laughs> oh, you heard about that. <laughs> the the stories of the Nymerians reach me even high in the Vale of Erin. Uh, as... yeah. and, and not not bad for a, a first ever melee. Uh, and he says, as does the occasional invitation. And he gestures to the hall that you're in for a wedding scene. So. No, I'll, like, I, like, I think I've got an idea of what he's getting at, but I'm not going he's to, like... Being a little snarky about your kind of warning him away from the... Uh, I mean, uh, but he's not hes not naming it for everyone else, so he hmm. is referencing a private conversation between you two, so he yeah. might be... Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, that's fine. It's um, flirting. It's flirting. I mean, I, mean, I did... I did um, well, I, li I like to think that I made clear that it was not a lack of uh hold on let me just like get my words together <laughs> uh, that um it was it was not that your uh presence was personally unwelcome only that i thought it might be politically unwise right you wouldn't want to get a reputation for not being able to protect all those guests of yours that i killed i understand it's fine You have quite the way with words, Berlin. Shakiri, I might need another drink soon. Well then, I'm afraid you'll need someone else to pour it. We've killed this soldier, I'm afraid. And he upends the bottle that is... Uh, it does have a few <laughs> final drops in it that just happened to land in Tyrion's cup. We <laughs> got them, it's all. Yes, I will momentarily be gone to find some more momentarily uh, and out of character you could just go across the room and like send Philea to get it like you don't need to Which is what I would do but I'm right. going to wait for a few seconds and I'm going to come back because um, I don't know how to handle this yeah uh, what's the handle <laughs> it's all under control everything's fine it doesn't seem under control but we'll find out soon won't we <laughs> Uh, and uh, Uncle Orain says, but you see, Tyrion, uh, it's worth the trip down there. It is deucedly hot, but uh, their hospitality is second to none for those of us that appreciate fine vines, if you will. Uh, though I'll admit the barrel I took with me upon my hasty departure did not last long. Well, that would explain why my inventory you? came up short. <laughs> 
So I, I step away to, to go exactly that, uh, fetch more wine. Um, sure. And, and, yeah, uh, and I'll uh, leave. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It, it, you know, you'll take you a minute or whatever to get back. So. Well, you'll find me asking Filet to get three bottles as well. So oh. Okay, just gonna... so. Oh, sister, I see you have also fetched more wine. Well, host gift. Oh. I you see, see who's at our table. I do. I spotted him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Look at the... I can see that fluster from here. Uh... Yeah, like at, like the, the 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 flush on Adam's cheeks could probably like light beacons in the Sea of Dorne to guide ships from the rocks. <laughs> right. Um. Oh. Um. You were going to go speak to Lord Frey. Is that what I heard? I. Oh. Wait. A task I would gladly trade you if you were to go sit with our brother for a few minutes. And uncle. Oh, wow. Done. <laughs> Very well. Done. <laughs> I'll take the Adam and and Lynn show plus Uncle Orain over <laughs> going and talking to Walter Frey. I suspect there's less chance he will slap me on the ass. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Absolutely. Yes, please. Okay, but understand that it is still a um, quite the storm you're walking into. And I will be joining well. soon. I mean, there's there, there only been a few arch remarks. It's not a storm yet. Yeah. Well. No names are coming. Am I supposed to soothe the waters or rough them up? Yeah, I would do nothing to the waters if I were you, but it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, see, I love the double of that, of like Orain being a waters. Uh -huh. so, just had a great play on words there. I don't know if that was It can work either way. Uh, I will see you in a few moments, and I'm like, uh, I'll take those bottles. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and yeah, by then we'll say Filet is back with uh, the the armful Thank of you, bottles, or rather, she's carrying one and some fray boy. Uh, is, is carrying the other three. That's what they're there for. If you've got them, you're going to use them. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Uh, uh, he almost bumps into her because instead of looking like where they're going, he's just staring right at that booty. Uh, <sighs> filet has got it going on. I was literally about to say that. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> She's got the bootay. Um, and here we are, my lord, my lady. Uh, and she hands one bottle uh, to Reyna uh, and then uh, just snaps her fingers and gestures uh, and an 11 year old that just hit puberty like rushes up to give Luke uh, the armful of, of bottles. Thank you. So if you'll handle the guest you go up there, and I'll go over there. <laughs> I had intended to speak of um, scholarly pursuits and uh, politics of Westeros with Tyrion, but um, for now, Are you go be over there, and I will talk to our host. You lying liar. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lying liar who lies. And or what the best pillow houses are. So they're all valid conversations. Yeah, you, you went to the party table for intelligent conversation. <laughs> well, Tyrion is not being smart. Tyrion's pretty smart. Oh, oh no, of course, it's fine, and that, that's probably part of why. I mean, like Adam wasn't just worried about like getting in trouble. He, like Tyrion's another person he knows to be like learned and so on. And right, yeah. but I, I I can't handle Lin Corbray right now, and I, I I will fight him if I have to. I cannot handle it right now. <laughs> So I'm going to be right down around. That is totally fair. <laughs> I will fight him if I have to. You're not going to have to fight him. Uh, let's let's go to our host then. Uh, let's let's follow Luke up to Lord Walder Frey. Uh, 
That's how much that's uh, that's 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 on my way across to the party table, I make eye contact with Bela and flick it towards the table that I'm going to. <laughs> and, and Bela made out of her, nervous, Jet. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and to, to make sure that she is aware of the situation that is occurring. Uh, and also to, you know, give her that whole twin communication thing. <laughs> so she's like, Professor X. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> My ex been to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh, so, uh, Bela glances down the table uh, and, yeah, uh, sees Lynn Corbre sitting right next to your baby brother. Astride uh, the bench. Uh, no, he, he turned and sat properly now. It's okay. just he just happened to stop astride the branch on his way to standing and then he had to lean forward a little bit to put his his goblet down is all. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh but yeah, so you see Lynn Corbray uh sitting next to Adam um with, with but I'm sure everything's fine cuz Uncle Orange's there. <laughs> Interior Lannister, you know, so everything's cool. There are adults in the room. <laughs> the yes. best wingman you could totally have. Right. I just I just want her aware. Whether she chooses <clears throat> to, to throw in is up to her. But Not yet. the more conversational targets that we have, the better. It, Go ahead. So Lord Frey, then. Uh, yeah, so, all right. So the warning is there. When we jump back to party into the table, we'll leave it up to Bailiff. She wants to slide on down right. there. That, I'm just giving her the option. All right. And... Uh, I will approach. As I approach, does any of his men approach me? Nah. Oh. Okay. Um, you know, and he's, he's, you know, a couple of his sons or grandsons or whatever are standing around. Uh, but Some phrase. Yeah. Some Frey brew. Um, uh, but yeah, he's sitting there and he's. He's picking at a bit of bread. Uh, and he just tears off a piece of bread and like soaks it in in the soup, and then like like gets it all soft, and then just kind of slurps it. Um, and he's he's picking at that a little, and then he looks at me. Eh, eh, Lord. Waters, you already said hello. Piss off. Oh no, I am not Lord Waters. No. I am oh, oh, Siberian. Oh. Right. Sorry, the, the hair. Um, it, it is dark in the hall. Um, I come to bring you uh, a small token of appreciation for the invitation on the hosting. Uh, some wine from our um, vineyards in Amer in, in uh, Wyvern's Rest. Yeah. Good. I've heard that it's good. Uh, I tend not to favor the Dornish, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, perhaps we'll make a good pitch. Oh my god! <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, yes, good. Uh, just just leave it. Uh, did you bring the girls and, and uh, the, the other one? And <laughs> the I, other one! We, oh. we did. They are uh, eating at your tables now. Ah! So... Decided to send a man instead of the heir, huh? <laughs> Fine. Uh, I was likely to take offense whichever way you answered the riddle. But you brought a gift, so good. Uh, welcome to my house. Someone's given you bread and salt by now, and if not, have, I'd sir. see you've already et some stew. They have, and um, hopefully you'll enjoy it or find a useful gift. Hope so. And I will bow, and I get no reason to hang out with this That's old man. <laughs> he's, he's just a, a less pleasant queen of thorns. Yeah, I'm not like, gonna get to me, but I'm also like, not gonna be like trying to fucking uh, spend some wits. So, yeah. see, totally since you went there, it was a relatively non-interaction. <laughs> <laughs> 
he like he was going to complain either way. Like if Reina had done it, it would be oh he sent a woman to do a man's job. But if I it mean, was, like, it there was are be... things he could have said that could have made this go much worse. So right. but it, it went well. You did good. Uh, I will head back towards table disaster. Oh, what? <laughs> Fuck. It's where you belong. <laughs> it is. It's calling me home. Um, but uh, I can't help but notice my brother and sister are there as well. Uh, Lord Tyrion, for his part, uh, hops up onto his bench uh, all the way uh, to bow uh, to uh, Lady Reyna as she returns. He goes, ah, silver hair, a noble bearing, and multiple bottles of wine. I never quite knew I had a type until now. Come, come. Uh, and he reaches out very openly uh, and then turns his hands for the wine instead of making it a, you know, clear uh, grope towards your chest. Good. <laughs> but said, oh, but come. Let's get those he uncorked. He to live this day. <laughs> he did. You must be, you must be the Lady Reyna, heir to the Blood Royal and Warden of the Stoneway. I hear your grandfather's a very important man. My father is also a very important man. But good news is I've got coin and you've got wine, so matters of great import don't matter here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree. <laughs> Besides, it's supposed to be a party, is it not? It may not. He says, kind of quizzically looking around. Because it's not. It's not very party like, is it's it? It's a terribly party ish. <laughs> it, is it is a feast. Well, perhaps you should try oh, another I'm... wedding later that would be more fun. I mean, surely it just needs liberal application of more wine. Does, <laughs> ah, have I been given then uh, an oral invitation to the gathering of the year at High Garden? I hear you snared yourself one of the pretty ones. Uh, I have! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure your children will be disgusting little beasts. I rather hope they're just devastating <laughs> instead of disgusting. Mm. Uh, Lord Willis is a learned man, and it would seem that finally one of us got the girl. And he pops the cork and, and, and starts to pour. Uh, uh, excellent. Uh, oh. Oh. Mm. And Colbray is the lord of his house, correct? No, he isn't. No. His no. Right, older brother's the lord yeah, of the house. brother's the lord. Right. Okay. So, oh, Sir Lynn. I haven't had the pleasure of your company since King's Landing. Uh, very happy remember. to see you. I don't remember. <laughs> That's a yeah. I don't remember us particularly enjoying one another's company then. But it was my pleasure to serve your house in its hour of dire need. It was, and you've got to <clears throat> have yet another service our brother whenever he wants. With your name. What, what? Use you. <laughs> I said no nothing. Problem. There's no record of it. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> no servicing went on, thank you. Uh, uh, but yes, it's good that you're all here. So we'll see if this proves as interesting as King's Landing was. I did get along with some of you rather well, he says, breathily. <laughs> Enough wow. that Adam feels it instead of just hearing it. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, uh, look at him turning all the shades of red. It's and me uh, your problematic boyfriend. Roasting. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I think like, Adam's just gonna kind of like try not to choke on his wine mid sip when that's said. Like, mm, mm. Well, I do know that you did impress my younger brother with your prowess. 
I don't leave it. Uh, I don't yes. say what we're, I don't say what kind of prowess. It's just <laughs> prowess. <laughs> I, I, um, it, uh, yeah, worth every penny. He, he looks, uh, smugly at Adam's red, red face. He goes, I do seem to have left an impression. <clears throat> yeah, my, 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 four, my four dice in being good at talking to people has just disappeared. <laughs> Situational modifiers. Yeah. Let me know when I arrive. Yeah, yeah, you're back. You're back by then. It's, it was uh. fun. Fucking save me, help! <laughs> I'm gonna look at Orin Waters and Tyrion and kind of try to suss the situation out. Uh, yeah, the, both bottles are already open. Like, instead of opening one and, like, pouring for everyone and finishing it, they just, like, opened both of the bottles that came to the table. Yeah, they're both uh, gonna be finished. So. Right. I, thought, I thought of something clever to say. Okay, take me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so like, what, like what, once Adam's done spluttering, um, it, 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 he'll try and play it cool and and say, well, um, since uh, since um, you chose to uh, uh, to be the one to approach this time, uh, I would say that you were not the only one who made an impression. So try to be cool. Try to be cool. I'm not going to be cool, but I'm going to try. He leans real close to reach past you and get his wine refilled. I'm just here for the wine. Mm, well, I mean, his ours was very good. <sighs> Slip <laughs> slippery, uh, slippery on the tongue, but lingers quite nicely in the mouth, as I recall. If you say so. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and he gives it a little swirl and a sniff before drinking, <sighs> taking a sip. So what have you been up to uh, this past almost a year since we've seen you? Terribly little. Uh, running a few errands, this and that and the other. Uh, serving my house uh, and lord as best I am able. And my best is very able. I'm 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 surprised uh, that you were uh, that you haven't been um, make, making good use of uh, of your um, <laughs> of your thousand gold up uh, on um, I, I I don't know what one uh, sorry I've just totally as a player completely <laughs> lost my ability to speak <laughs> but. Right. What, what what I'm trying to con convey uh, is basically like I'm I'm surprised that you weren't making a big splash with like your windfall essentially. Uh, he just waves away talk of money. Again, I have served my house quite ably. Uh, alas, quite uh, such a rude topic, anyways. Uh, alas, uh, Lady Forlorn has uh, of late only sipped of the blood of bandits, and it's more watery than Frey's wine. No duels of note. Uh, though I am on my way to that tourney uh, in Lannisport after this, perhaps we'll see. Oh, perhaps we'll find a partner there worth dueling. <laughs> I've... I've Excellent subtext. <laughs> uh, he reaches down and... Uh, yeah, actually, because he's sitting to Adam's, like, in my head, he's to Adam's right, which is why he keeps, like, like leaning toward past Adam to get to people, so he's to Adam's right, which means the sword, which is hanging from his hip as he sits, is basically in his lap, like the hilt. Mm -hmm. So he, he reaches down uh, <laughs> and just kind of runs his fingers along the length of the hilt, where probably no one but Adam can see. He goes, I haven't found anyone. He says, I, I haven't found a, a, a good match yet, but she and I do so enjoy trying. Most unfortunate then. <clears throat> oh. Okay. <laughs> 
So I'm gonna have to remember to to get my sword out for these these role plays, so I can make it even worse for Adam. We can have the we can have the hilt cam that shows you what Lin, what, what, what Lin Lin fingers are doing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's especially with this one. I got I've got the extended pommel, so it's a really long hilt. <laughs> We don't have the uh, the extra adult category that such a <laughs> yeah. camera might require. We, we need to put, put the warning up there. Uh, not for children. Uh, We're well, already I'm... in the mature category. Yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> like, everything about this is unexpected, including just like how strong he's coming on. Like, okay. I, I don't uh, know what to do it's in public. <laughs> everyone is left with the impression that these three have been like sitting here and drinking kind of since they got here right like like this is just kind of how this three in particular uh mm -hmm. who are you know all kind of bastard outcasts in their way uh that they have just taken to sitting together and drinking and making snide comments about people that walk by and mm -hmm. you know just like it's know. just like so watery as the wine may have been uh they are clearly all uh, doing their part to drink the green uh, of the trident dry. <laughs> Uncle Ord, um, I was embarrassed enough in the room when your letter to Bela was read. I had a suspicion that maybe you weren't that serious when you wrote that. Uh, nephew, you wound me. Everything I do is serious. Mm, indeed. Uh, but, yes, no, I was quite certainly serious about not wanting to get married to my yes. niece. Nah. Or at all, honestly. Uh, leave that to my betters. Do you picture yourself a lifetime bachelor or something else uh, in your mind, Uncle? I like to think by the time I'm of an age to be called a lifetime anything, I'll just be running a brothel somewhere. Ah! A noble goal. Well, if you need someone to do the books... <laughs> uh, oh, oh. We will all run uh, off for a, a brothel company somewhere, and um, I guess we'll have to hire women, or men, or both. Uh, I, suppose uh, I suppose I should worry a little about keeping track of the coin. Uh, but yes, uh, perhaps one of those associate pleasure barges. I can make that all the rage. Sail mm. up and down the trident hawking my wares and, recru <laughs> and recruiting farmers' daughters. They're cheap. It's not the worst idea I've ever heard from you, Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, it's always nice to... I mean, it's usually a good idea to have something to fall back on if one's, uh, one's ambitions do not play out. Ah, I find it's best to not have many of them. Ah, just a simple man with a simple dream and an empty cup imp uh, <laughs> he says as though he had not poured himself most of that goblet like <laughs> but yeah, like, I, I, like I'm just gonna like glance at Tyrion at that of like is, like is he bothered by being called that by Orin? Uh he lets out a uh like a mournful wistful melodramatic sigh uh and and those big puppy dog eyes and his iris oh look at me so besotted that i a true-born lannister an heir to castle rock serve a bastard oh well uh and then he <laughs> pours um, pours himself a little more quite some scandal i see here i won't tell my father if you don't and you won't, because I doubt he'd let any of you into Castle Rock. <laughs> Not if he's smart, no. <laughs> Would he let any of them out? <laughs> any of your people? Hmm? I'm sorry. I'm drunk. He says by way of just not quite getting your reference. It's okay. Uh... I was speaking out of turn, my lord. It's it's fine. I, you, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 no. Shht. 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 Are you shushing me, my lord? This, <laughs> this is the out of turn end of the table. 
it would appear so. It's true, since Dragula had a turn since this began, and out of the whole time. So, uh, what was I, it? I, 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 look, look, I don't recall a time you ever spoke in turn. Right? Right? Um, so, good no, point. please, uh, continue. I must insist. Lady Reyna, what's this about people escaping Castle Rock? Oh, I, I was merely curious if any of your extended families might be available to maybe foster elsewhere. Maybe somewhere more south. Are you trying to get in one last romp before Highgarden? I must warn you away for propriety's sake. Uh, <laughs> Sir Willis and you would never find happiness in your marital bed if we were to Devil. <laughs> Fantastic. It is Please said once over. you go bold, nothing else is so bold. Or do oh. you mean a different sort of available? And an entirely different down south. <laughs> I, think should, I think you should fuck him. <laughs> I'm halfway there, personally. Right, like, leaves over towards him so that he gets the shot right down the front of the dress. <laughs> And it's just, oh my lord, if that's what we were talking about, there would be absolutely no doubt in your mind or elsewhere. <laughs> oh, there's hardly ever doubt in my elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> uh, but no. Uh... No, I was thinking of your cousin. Uh... I've said joy. joy. Oh, the, the little one over there, Joy. Uh, oh, yes. Because we have recently uh, come into new lands, and so my sister and I are living apart for the first time ever. And, and we have shared a lady's maid for also ever. Uh, Philea. <laughs> uh, mm. Uh, but while Philea wishes to stay... I heard of her. <laughs> Phil she wishes to stay in Wyvern's Rest with myself. Uh, but my sister needs a, needs a lady maid of her own. Ah, and as I recall, the Nymerian lands are famously barren when it comes to children besides you lot. Your Aunt Elia, who is entirely too fun to live so very far from me, is as of yet unwed and has no child. And, uh, hmm, something Bridington, uh, but I don't care. Uh, and then, oh, uh, there is the Danitlands only recently returned to the fold, but then you went and married the Lady Iris off, uh, as a show horse, as I recall. But, yes, it would seem that you are lacking for highborn girls. Indeed. And... Well, uh, you may not have noticed if you only looked at her pretty face, but she is only a hill. Hmm. I don't much care. Uh... <laughs> ah, what they say about the Dornish is true. Let us hope the rest of the rumors are out as well. Uh, so... Most of them are, sir. Every single one. <laughs> That's a Marlowe type. Well, what? And he, he looks down under the table. There's no goat at all. Goat? I said most. Uh. <clears throat> I really uh. thought you were mentioning the beauty and the loving nature of the Dornish folk. Oh, I care little for the folk. It's just the women that interest me. Uh, but yes. Uh, mm, hmm. So, you are wanting a hill of Casterly Rock as a handmaiden to hmm, children of the Warden of the Stoneway and the Blood Royal and other serious, terribly serious titles. Uh, to be clear, I must ask, 
Though she is taller than me, I am my cousin's elder. And as such, it is my chivalrous duty something something protect her. Do you want her as a handmaiden or as more? I was rather hoping that she would uh, be taken under Vela's wing and tutored in the ways of the warrior. No! Oh, warrior! That sentence could have ended in an entirely different way. Well, uh, I don't know or care much at all about that. Uh, I'm quite a bit shorter than my other brother. Perhaps you've heard of him. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Well, yes, as long as she wouldn't be taken advantage of, I don't see any reason that we couldn't work out a suitable arrangement. Uh, alas and alack, you have no other siblings or the like to trade, so we'd need something else. Uh, but, perhaps you've heard, though we have scads of it, we rather like gold. <laughs> so I don't doubt something could be... No! Wait, it only just occurred to me. I love wine! <laughs> <laughs> I do believe we have some of that. Well, less than when we first met, but... And less uh, going forward, I suppose, in general. <laughs> yes. Also, with our, um, with our increased control over the length of the stone way, we can probably also guarantee... Uh, well, we can probably also offer more favorable trade routes between our wine and your lips. Uh, uh, the silent scholar speaks, but speaks my language. Um, yes, I'm sure we can work out a suitable arrangement when I'm sober enough to math. Excellent. I can't promise that that will happen while I'm enjoying the good cheer and company of the gracious Lord Walder Frey. Uh, but, uh, I do think I'm not yet drunk enough that maps have turned sidelong. So, unless I've entirely missed my guess, if you are on your way to Highgarden, instead of being so smitten that you and I are running off to Essos, I think that you are headed to the Westerlands after this, and... Doubt I will be unfortunately sober at some point during the trip to Casterly Rock. It must like, happen sometimes. Hmm. I, uh, I hear there's a turning uh, um, in Landisport soon. Uh, yes, uh, I have heard the same, though I don't particularly care for such things. Uh, it's expected from time to time. Uh, hmm. Yes. Uh, I'm certain we can work out a suitable arrangement uh, by that point. And uh, let's see to it that uh, Joy is not dishonored and I'm not overly scolded upon my triumphant return. <laughs> I... Uh... I appreciate your consideration, my lord, and I look forward to traveling with you. I think perhaps, though, in the interest of seeing to the safety and well-being of my beloved cousin, natural-born as she may be, I'd best thoroughly interview your current handmaiden to see into the nature of employment within your household. Make well, certain that you're not cruel to her or something. <laughs> that, my lord, is entirely up to Philea. Entirely. Oh, the water. <laughs> he says, sounding disappointed. <laughs> entirely up to her. Well, I think I'll still take my chances. I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying your odds are bad. I'm just saying. <laughs> Mine seldom are. I think I got most of my bad luck out early. Then, if you will excuse me, uh, and he drinks the last of his wine and clumps it down, uh, you know, the, the, the goblet, 
Uh, and he turns that motion into a bow. And then he straightens up from that gracious bow and does a little backwards tumble uh, mm -hmm. off the uh, off the, the seat uh, out of character. It doesn't really come up in the fucking show, but in the books, uh, Tyrion was kind of trained as a circus tumbler, acrobat type of thing, um, which used to be one of how he made people laugh, made his his relatives laugh. So he's he's all nimbly pimbly in in the, the timeline. Uh, so he does this quick little backflip uh, and it lands perfectly but then stands a little wobbly uh, and then marches off hiking up his britches and approaching the Lady Filet. Uh, <laughs> you on yourself. So, um, They'll disappear shortly. <laughs> yes, he's quite good with the ladies. Um, any other particular conversating planned for the evening? Well, I mean, yes, but I'm conscious that there's six minutes left in the stream, so... Alright, um, I think what we will do is have everyone head back to their chambers and get some, some rest and whatnot, uh, and we will pick up in two weeks with the next mm -hmm. morning, uh, or not in two weeks, because yeah. Bayla's player, mm -hmm. Erica, hates us all, and doesn't want us to get to play anymore. Right? What? Uh, I know. I'm surprised too. She's she's like, I got a man, married Balin Swan. I'm out, and she just doesn't. Ah, so uh, somebody else. So uh, right? Erica has some real life shenaniganry coming up in a few weeks. So we will not be back for four weeks. But so, uh... when we return uh, with in character stuff. Uh, we'll pick up the next morning, so everyone kind of think about what you want to do the next day to socialize with various people pre-wedding. Um, and in two weeks' time, the rest of us will be here doing something. Uh, so we might just kind of hang out. Uh, I might just do kind of one of my normal weekday type of streams, and we'll just hang out and play some video games or something. So we'll do something in two weeks. Uh, but, yeah, we're not going to do uh, an episode episode without Erica uh, playing Bela. Um, they had mentioned things over in Discord. Do you guys want to send mention those now so they don't get forgotten? Who had mentioned what in Discord? What am I missing? Erica and Adam... So, Erica and Ash had both said something about sending ravens. Uh, 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 the thing is, like, I removed that because I oh, wanted... Okay. To, I want Because like, there's, like, a, at least one conversation I need to have with you okay. lot before I send a letter, so... Fair, fair, uh, sorry. And, and we're skipping ahead farther than I was expecting, so, um, like, that's all kind of scuppered just now. All right, so, uh, if people need to send ravens, uh, they can talk to me off, off schedule. Uh, I just yeah, don't I want stuff to go oh, lost. Sure. It was kind of a humorous sort of okay. raven. All right. Uh, well, with that, then. Oh, hey, thanks, Bad Nug. The little animation right. caught my eye. Uh, sorry that you missed most of the episode, but the video. Uh, I'm trying to get back. Uh, our internet has stabilized significantly, and the videos are going up a little bit better. Uh, but uploading them to YouTube sometimes takes two and a half hours sometimes takes 15 minutes so uh i haven't been able to keep up with it uh well but uh we'll get back to it soon so we'll get to the and, and the video even before that should be available here on twitch uh even before it's sent to youtube so hopefully you can get caught up pretty soon then so we'll wrap it up uh with folk returning to their chambers uh Bela, Reyna, Philea does not return. You, you have you have not seen her, uh, and and you're you know she did clean up the chambers and stuff. That's why she was a minute or so late leaving. With getting undressed it's a lot easier than getting dressed, so it's not a big I'll deal. I'll say. Uh, <laughs> um, ah. So uh, that part, uh, she you know, would seem that uh, Tyrion made a good first impression and is working on a good second. Um, Orain Waters. Stumbles his way past you lot, uh, being half carried.
by a grumbling Lynn Corbray, um, uh, who those who two are perfect for each other. Very right? pointedly and kind of comedically shoves him into his room, uh, and then goes, "Well, enjoy your spot. Uh, I'm even further down the hallway." Is he uh, not your and... type, Lynn? Look. Hmm. Uh, nah. Nah. Off to bed with you, <laughs> elder boy of the Nymerians. Elder boy. That, that, like, uh, sorry, that, like, that was shape pattern. <laughs> that was a really rubbish comeback. <laughs> and we'll see the lot of you in the morning. Uh, and he bows and saunters off. Him go, but I love to watch him leave. <laughs> oh my god. And then, uh, after Luke is in his room, uh, as Adam is opening his door and heading in, he hears swift footsteps behind him. And he turns just in time to catch a hand on the middle of his chest and get pushed into his chamber oh. and then off to the side up against the wall where Lynn Corbray gives him a deep kiss before kicking the door closed. Oh, shit. And oh. cut. I have killed him. He is dead. <laughs> oh, wow. And now they casually check on Adam. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, hmm. So. I don't hate it. <laughs> We'll see everybody back in four weeks. We are not I'm gonna sh- we are not gonna pick up with Adam pinned against the wall by Lynn Corbray, no matter no. how long he stays there. Uh, <laughs> that is our tasteful fade to black cut, right? Uh, so we will pick up the next morning uh, to see how socializing goes in the morning, and see what <laughs> order people wake up in, and, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So uh, we'll no, see- no, like that. <laughs> The rest of this visit, no one's going to see Adam. (laughs) Um, So, we'll see. And nobody knew that was going to happen but Rusty. Yeah, I was... Kept that close to the desk. I mean, I I had an inkling something was going to happen. I didn't know exactly what, but... um, (laughs) He was not being subtle, so... I I, I assumed that there was going to be a conversation about it at some point, but we have bypassed it. No conversation. Uh, there was a reason I, I. Rusty, pardon? Just saw your comment. Hmm? What? What now? Uh, I just saw you being rude in the chat. Uh, <laughs> he is rude. Uh, so yeah, that was part of why I was playing up the fact that they were like, like all three of them were already drunk, so that we could skip the conversation. Uh, so, uh, we'll be back here uh, in two weeks on Sunday doing something, maybe kind of a Q&A thing or, or whatever, or maybe just me playing. In yeah, the meantime, whatever. I'm back. This week, I will be back on track on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, I had a big project that was due on Saturday. Um, so I spent the early part of the week getting my notes together and then just kind of all I did Thursday, Friday, Saturday was right. So, um, but that is done. It is caught up. It is good. And I will be back to playing some PC games on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Hope Thanks, everybody. We appreciate all the bits and cheers and subscriptions and all of that good stuff. As always, your generosity and your enthusiasm for the show are greatly appreciated by the lot of us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.